Shortstop, number 24, Iggy Suarez. And pitching position, number 16, Michael Pollock. The manager for Prince Gordon, Willie Upshaw. This is Long Island Ducks Baseball. Swung on and ripped down the right field line. This one this is deep. Is it is Long gone Island from C.I. to see you later. 2-0 here as well. Hit to right field. Jumasi is going back. Forget it. It's gone. A grand slam home run for Brian Nelson. Justin Davies at the plate. The winning run at third. Crowd going nuts. Swung on. Bouncing ball left side. Off the mid. Up third baseman Brad. The Long Island Ducks win it 5 to 4, and they are the champions of the Liberty Division. Lions punt up the third baseline. Esquivel charging in. They're not going to have a play, and the Ducks are the champions of the Atlantic League here in 2012. And there is a mob scene of Long Island Ducks in right center field. They are the Atlantic League champions. And now it's time for the Long Island Ducks North Shore LIJ Southside Hospital pregame show. Live here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut, it is time once again for Long Island Ducks baseball. And today it's breakfast with the Ducks and the Bluefish, a 10.35 a.m. start, a school day here in Bridgeport as the Ducks and Bluefish play game number two of this three-game series. Well, good morning, Ducks fans. My name is Michael Pollock. I'll be bringing you the play-by-play -play for all of today's action live here on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball, live streaming video and audio coming to you here from the ballpark at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Last night, these two teams played the first game of the 2013 Ferry Cup Series, and it did not go well for the Ducks. Fresh off their 3-2 win in York to close out a three-game series. Ducks did not get off to the right start against Bridgeport last night. Ducks left 12 men on base in a 4-2 loss. A ninth-inning rally fell two runs short with the tying run stranded on base. And as we recap yesterday's game, Nick DeBar started the game for Long Island, did not start off well as in the bottom of the first inning. Austin Crum reached on an infield single to second base with one out. And then after Alexis Gomez grounded it a first to move Crum to second, Prentice Redmond with a two-out RBI single to right field brought home Crum and gave Bluefish a, the Bluefish a 1-0 lead. 
Two innings later, Bluefish would tack on another run as Iggy Suarez led off the inning with a double down the right field line and then came home when Daniel Mayoris chopper to the left side snuck through for a base hit. Mayoris RBI single put the Bluefish ahead two to nothing. Ducks stranded four on base in the first four innings, but they finally were able to get a run home in the fifth. With one out, Dan Lyons singled to right field. He would go to second on a ground out to third by Danny Perales. And with Lyons at second base and two men out, up came Josh Barfield. And his 0-1 pitch on the way to Josh Barfield. Swung it in line in the left field. Shallow on the run as the left fielder. Redmond, he's not going to get it. It's a base hit. Lines around third. He will come home to score. An RBI single to left with two out by Josh Barfield. Ducks have cut the deficit in half, and they trail 2-1. to one. So the RBI single for Josh Barfield to left field. His fifth run batted in of the year. Ducks had cut the deficit to 2-1. But we've talked about it so many times. After you score runs, don't want to give any back. That was not the case in the bottom of the fifth as Bridgeport would score two off of Nick DeBar to balloon their lead up to three. Austin Crum started the inning reaching on an infield single, a liner that went off the hand of the pitcher, Nick DeBar. DeBar was okay, but he did give up a double on the next at bat to Alexis Gomez that put runners at second and third. And when the throw from, from uh, the left fielder, Ryan Canari, hit the second base bag, it allowed Crum to score from third. So a run was in, two batters into the fifth. After a strikeout of Prentice Redmond, Luis Lopez would line a single back up the middle. That would score Gomez from second. Two runs in the inning, and Bridgeport had taken a 4-1 lead. Ducks had several chances throughout the course of the game to get back in the ball game, but they stranded two on base in the fifth, two on base with one out in the sixth, a runner at first with one out in the seventh, and a runner at third with one out in the eighth inning. So in the ninth inning, Jeff Fulcino came on to try and get the save, and the Ducks would put together a little bit of a rally to try and come back in the game. Dan Lyons led off the inning with his fourth triple of the year, a liner down the right field line that got caught up in the bullpen. So the Ducks had a runner at third, nobody out. Danny Perales would strike out swinging, but then Josh Barfield would come to the plate with the runner at third and one man out. One ball, two strikes, one out, and the runner at third is Dan Lyons. He has great speed. Barfield ready, Fulcino ready, the one-two. Swung it in line in a right center field on the run and dropping in front of Smith. It's a base hit. Into score is Dan Lyons. Second four hit game of the year for Josh Barfield. He is down four for five. And the Ducks have cut the deficit to two. It's 4-2 here in the ninth inning. And that will bring the tying run of the plate. So Josh Barfield with his second RBI single of the game. He was four for five yesterday. His second four hit game of the season. And the Ducks had cut the deficit to two. It was four to two. And they had the tying runs at second and third for Joe Ashbrodine and Brian Nelson. Things were looking good for the Ducks, looking like they were going to be able to tie the game first, though. Ben Broussard would come to the plate with a runner at first and one out. Broussard hit a deep drive to right that landed at the base of the wall, so it was a double. Just missed the game-tying two-run home run, so that was what put runners at second and third with the tying runs on base and only one out. Joe Ashbrodine, though, would strike out swinging. Brian Nelson would ground to second. And the Ducks could not come from behind to tie the game. And they stranded two more on base in the ninth inning. The tying runs on base as the Bluefish win it 4-2. to two. The final totals, four runs, nine hits, four errors for the Bluefish. They left eight on base. And they're still able to win despite making the four errors in the game. Two runs, 11 hits for the Ducks. One error, they left 12 on base. The winning pitcher was Josh Butler, who allowed just one run on seven hits in seven innings. He improved to three and two. Nick DeBar allowed four runs on eight hits and two walks in five and two thirds. He suffered the loss to drop to 0 and five. And despite allowing a run on three hits in the ninth inning, Jeff Fulcino earned his sixth save of the year. Game took two hours and 45 minutes in front of 1,527 fans here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. We're going to take a break here on the pregame show. When we come back, I sit down with Joe Ash Brodine to discuss the tough loss yesterday and today's morning affair against the Bluefish. Hi, this is manager Kevin Baez, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. North Shore LIJ, Southside Hospital in Bayshore, is the health care heart of our community. We provide outstanding health care right here at home with centers of excellence in cardiology, orthopedics, neurosciences, women's health services, and much more. Experience counts, and North Shore LIJ, Southside Hospital, has been around for nearly a century of care. For more information, please call 631-968-3000 or visit us on the web at www.nslij.com. 
Hey, Ducks fans, the official hotel of the Long Island Ducks is the Holiday Inn Islip MacArthur Airport in Ronkonkoma. Uncover the perfect balance of memorable, award-winning service and the most central location Long Island has to offer. The Holiday Inn is located less than a quarter mile from the Islip MacArthur Airport with a state-of-the-art health and fitness center, high-speed internet access, a world-class outdoor pool, and the great food and fun inside the Brickyard Bar and Grill. There's never been a better time to visit the Holiday Inn Islip Airport Best of all, it's only minutes away from Beth Page Ballpark. The Holiday Inn, the official hotel of the Long Island Ducks. Call 585-9500 today. That's 631-585-9500. Back here in Bridgeport, Connecticut, Long Island Ducks and the Bridgeport Bluefish getting set for game two of this three-game midweek series before the Ducks will return home on Friday to... Begin a seven-game homestand. Ducks and the Bluefish open up the series last night. Not a good game for the Ducks. They fall four to two. They leave 12 men on base. They left at least one on every inning. And it was a game that the Ducks felt like they should have won against a struggling Bluefish team, but a tough loss for the Ducks. Fortunately for Long Island, they did not lose any ground on Southern Maryland in the standings, as they are still five games in back of Southern Maryland. Joe Ashbordine is our guest today on the pregame show to talk about last night's game and the morning affair today against Bridgeport. Joe Ash, uh, last night 12 men left on base. Obviously not the way you guys wanted to start off this three-game set. How frustrating is it when you guys are getting runners on basically every inning to not be able to get that big hit to bring guys home? Uh, it's definitely frustrating. We had our opportunities. We've had it, you know, most of the year. We just got to come up with those, you know, one-out, two-out hits with guys in scoring position, and and we'll be fine. Is it a scenario where you guys just seem to have a different mindset when you come up to the plate when runners are on base that's uh, kind of – inhibited you from being relaxed like your normal selves when you're up at the plate when say maybe there's runners that are not on base uh, I don't think so I think for the most part top to bottom we're taking the same approach um, no matter what the situation is I feel like we're hitting balls hard or just kind of kind of right at people uh, which is kind of been I feel the story of our year so far offensively got a lot of guys Nelly's been hitting the ball hard Castro's been hitting the ball hard just right at people um, but hopefully today, you know, things will change. We'll stick with our approach and, and go to work today. And you said it perfectly. It definitely seems like that has been the case throughout the course of the year where guys have just been lining into some tough outs. Uh, when that's happening, how much does that frustrate you personally as a hitter, and what's the best way to kind of get around that, or do you just keep the same approach and hope that eventually the ball is going to fall? Yeah, I really, you really can't get frustrated about it. Uh, We've been playing this game for a long time, some more than others, but it's still baseball. You still got to take the same approach, have the same mindset, you know, day in, day out. If you hit the ball hard, you just that's all you can do. That's all you can control. So you got to kind of take that feeling into the next day, the next at bat, and, and go from there. Talk about the resiliency, though, of this team to put together a rally in the ninth inning when it seemed like you guys weren't able to get together a big rally throughout the course of the game. You finally get one together in the ninth inning. Yeah, that's kind of been the story of our, our summer so far also. You know, we've if we struggle for seven innings, we're going to we're gonna keep fighting, keep battling, try to put up a fight in the, in the eighth and ninth inning. Um, that shows a lot of character about our team. Uh, we just haven't been able to pull them out so far, but we've been in a lot of close ball games, probably – you know, 10 or 12 losses by one run, something like that. But, you know, we're going to keep fighting, keep grinding out, and uh, keep working today and try to get a win. For you personally, the way you've been hitting so far in the first half, a rare 0 for yesterday, uh, just talk about the offensive abilities that you've had so far this season and how good you felt at the plate and how much it frustrates you when you don't have a, a good day like yesterday. Yeah, I've, I've felt good pretty much all year. Surprisingly, yesterday I felt really good too, you know. I Early in the game, I felt like I, I took some pretty good swings. I was just a little bit out in front, um, you know, and then I even the later part of the games, I still feel like I took good swings. I just wasn't getting the, the results that I wanted. So, you know, you just got to keep with that mentality that, you know, you're shooting the ball well, putting good swings together. And, you know, today's gonna, a new day, and that's the great part about baseball. So we'll just go get them today. Michael Cola, the starter here today, was originally supposed to start last night, and then Josh Butler ended up getting the late uh, decision to start. Uh, did that change your guys' mindset at all with the fact that you originally were supposed to face Cola and then had to face Butler last second? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, for me personally, I don't know who either of them are, so I guess it, it didn't make a huge impact on me. But, you know, it de depending, it doesn't matter really who's who's on the mound. They still got to throw a ball over a plate, and we got to hit it. So, 
you know, hopefully we get to this guy early and try to get in their bullpen and, you know, that'll wear them down for tomorrow's game and, and so on. So we're going to try and put up some numbers early in this game for sure. 10.35 a.m. game today for a baseball player. How tough is it to play in a game this early in the morning? It's actually not that bad. I'm not a morning person at all, but, you know, after the first 20 minutes, once you get out of bed, it's actually a pretty good deal. You know, you, you play a game and then have all afternoon, evening off. So, you know, like I said, after the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes getting up out of bed, everything's the same, you know, nine innings of baseball. So, You guys have had some success in these games so far earlier this year, wins in Lancaster and in Camden. Uh, so now you come out here against the Bluefish today, a game, the middle game of the series, to give your chance to guys, uh, give your guys a chance to win the series. How important is today's game? It's huge. Series wins are, are where it's all at. You know, if we win every series from here on out, we're probably going to be the first half champions, and that's our goal, and that's how we look at it. So we go in and, you know, got a good opportunity to win it starting today. So that's what we're going to go do. And you got James Hauser on the mound, second start, filling in for the injured Dontrell Willis. Talk about what you saw from him his first time out and how confident you are with him on the mound today. Very confident with Hauser. Just his, his confidence in himself and what he can do kind of um, flows through the rest of us. You know, he, he hasn't been a starter. I don't know what his background is in starting, but, you know, he came out and I think it was York. Had a pretty good outing there, you know, went five strong innings. Um, so we expect him to, to be around the plate, put the ball in play, and our defense will be, a, be able to help him out. All right, Joe Ashwell, best of luck in the early start today and the rest of the way here in the first half. Thank you. Bless America here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We're going to take a break when we come back. Starting lineups and the first pitch. Hi, this is Steve Foucault, pitching coach for the Ducks. You're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. North Shore LIJ, Southside Hospital in Bayshore is the health care heart of our community. We provide outstanding health care right here at home with centers of excellence in cardiology, orthopedics, neurosciences, women's health services, and much more. Experience counts, and North Shore LIJ Southside Hospital has been around for nearly a century of care. For more information, please call 631-968-3000 or visit us on the web at www.nslij.com. 
I love coming to the stadium. What do you love about a Long Island Ducks game? The excitement. The laughter. The memories. Spending time with my family. Watching my grandson's eyes light up. Dancing with Quacker Jack. What about you? A 400-foot shot. Definitely the food. Getting autographs and running the bases. Play ball! For game times and promos for your 2012 Atlantic League champions, visit liducks.com. I love this game. Ducks baseball. It's game time. Hi, this is Bud Harrelson, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball and the Ducks' official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ducksbaseball. Hi, I'm former Major Leaguer John Franco. Growing up in Brooklyn, I dreamed of playing professional baseball. My dad, a city employee, worked hard so I could live out that dream. The team at MCU is a lot like my dad. They're New Yorkers you can count on, and they'll work hard to help you reach your financial goals. Municipal Credit Union has a full range of financial services that make sense in today's economy. Join today. Call 1-866-JOIN-MCU or visit nymcu.org. MCU. Strong. Trusted. Growing. Back here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Just about set for baseball today between the Long Island Ducks and the Bridgeport Bluefish. Nice crowd on hand here for this school day. I'm told there are 13 schools in attendance here today. And the kids here today will be treated to a game between the Ducks and the Bridgeport Bluefish. Game two of the 2013 Ferry Cup Series. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups. For the Ducks, managed by Kevin Baez, Danny Perales will lead off in center field. Adam Bailey will hit in the second spot. He is in right field as Josh Barfield gets the day off. Ben Broussard at first base hits third, and in the cleanup spot, the left fielder is Joe Ash Brodeen. Batting fifth, playing third base, it is Brian Nelson. Ralph Henriquez does the catching and hits sixth. Murray Watts, the designated hitter, batting in the seventh spot. P.J. Phillips will hit eighth. He plays second base, and rounding out the order, is the Duck shortstop, Dan Lyons. They will all face right-handed pitcher Michael Kola, who is on the mound right now for the Bridgeport Bluefish. Kola was originally scheduled to start yesterday's game, but right before game time, Bluefish decided to make the old switcheroo, and instead Josh Butler pitched last night, and he pitched well to earn his third win of the year as he fired seven innings of one-run baseball, allowing just seven hits. So Michael Cola will get the start today for the Bluefish, and Cola enters with a record of 2-3 and three on the year, 4.13 earned run average. And for Cola, this will be start number nine on the year. In 45 and two-thirds innings, he's allowed 47 hits, just 15 walks to 40 strikeouts. Has not won a game, though, since May 8th, so he will take the mound for Bridgeport. And he is done with his warm-up tosses, so we are just about set for baseball here on a gorgeous Wednesday morning. Terrific weather once again here in Bridgeport. And after the hot, humid weather that the Ducks and the Revolution faced Friday through Sunday up in York, great weather the last three days now. And we are just about set to go here in this morning contest. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Ducks' official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ducksbaseball. Danny Perales will step up to the plate, batting from the left side. Cola steps up onto the mound, pitching from the right side. And the first pitch of today's game is on the way. Perales will take, and it's downstairs for ball one. So that's how we begin here at about 10.42 in the morning. Third morning game for the Ducks this year. Ducks are 2-0 in their previous two games. On the 1-0, swung on and hit on the ground to the right side and passed Daniel Maiora in a right field, a base hit. So a good start for Long Island. Second straight day that Danny Perales gets on a lead off the ball game. Yesterday he drew a walk in the opening inning. So Perales is at first, nobody out, and that will bring up the right fielder, Adam Bailey. And Bailey moves up to the number two spot today with Josh Barfield getting the day off. Barfield... Gets the day off after a terrific day yesterday at the plate. He was four for five, four singles, two runs batted in. But still recovering from that hamstring injury. So Kevin Baez gives him the day today with the day game after the night game. First pitch to Adam Bailey. That's a fastball in there for a strike, nothing and one. Bailey was one for four in yesterday's game. Picked up a single to left in the eighth inning. Eventually made it to third when the ball was misplayed by the left fielder Prentice Redman. On the 0-1, up and outside. No, it's on the outside corner, a called strike. 
Daly thought it was up and outside, and that's how it looked from behind home plate, but the count is now nothing and two on the lefty swinging Adam Bailey. Corrales has good speed at first. He takes his lead. And the 0-2 coming from Michael Cola is swung in and fouled over the screen and off to our left behind home plate. You can hear all the kids screaming with the ball coming back into the crowd. Most of the kids sitting up in the box seating sections here, the upper level of the main seating bowl. Lots of empty blue seats down below in the field box seats, but a lot of kids behind home plate. More so down the line, you see the empty seats. 0-2, runner goes, and Bailey takes or swings and misses for strike three. Perales actually stopped as he started to take off. So Bailey strikes out. Perales is still at first. And there's one away here in the top of the first inning. Tough break, too. If Perales went, he probably would have made it because the ball was bobbled by the catcher at home plate, Louis Rodriguez. So with one on and now one out, that'll bring up Ben Broussard, who had one hit in yesterday's game, but was on base three separate times. Cola's first pitch to him is a fastball that missed outside for ball one. Broussard reached twice on an error, both of them by the second baseman, Daniel Maiora, who now has nine errors on the season. And he picked up a double to right field in the ninth that just missed being a game-tying two-run home run. 1-0 from Cola. That's low and inside. Nice scoop out of the dirt by Louis Rodriguez. And the count 2-0 here on Ben Broussard. Umpires for today's game, Hank Kimmon in his behind home plate, Matt Hensel over at first, and Alan Reyes around at third. Second time that Hemmen in his behind home plate for a Ducks game. He was behind home plate as well for the Ducks 3-2 win in New York on Monday evening. 2-0 from Cola. Broussard swings, chops it past the mound, slowly to second. Mayora charges, he collides with Perales. So Perales is going to be out, and now both Perales and Mayora are shaken up. It's going to be a four unassisted fielder's choice. Both Dottie Pitchford and Erica Ventura, the trainers for the Ducks and Bluefish respectively, come out to check on the injured players. So it's going to be a four unassisted fielder's choice there as Perales and Mayora collide. On the way to second base for Perales. Perales is walking off the field with a slight limp towards the third base dugout. Mayora certainly seemed like he was shaken up on the play and was down for a little while, but back up on his feet here, talking things over with Erica Ventura. Willie Upshaw, the manager of the Bluefish, came out of the dugout as well to discuss and figure out whether or not interference should be called here to say that it should have been a double play. Broussard doesn't run all that well, so it's very possible that it would have been a double play, but Perales just doing what he's supposed to do and run to second base, and it just so happened that the ball met the glove of Mayora and Perales at the same time. So it's going to be a four unassisted, unassisted fielder's choice. Mayora is okay. He will stay in the game. And Broussard is at first with two out, and that'll bring up Joe Ash Brodine, the left fielder and cleanup man for Long Island. Rest of the defense for the Bluefish. Prentice Redmond is in left field. Austin Crum in center. And the right fielder is Stantrell Smith. First pitch on the way here from Cola to Brodine. And it is taken on the outside corner for strike one. On the infield, Russ Mitchell at third. Iggy Suarez the shortstop. Daniel Mayora at second. Luis Lopez at first. Louis Rodriguez behind home plate. 0-1. Brodine fouls this one to the screen behind the plate. And the count quickly, nothing in two. So we'll keep our eye on the field to see if Perales comes out to play the bottom of the first. I'm sure he is okay, but definitely seemed to be walking with a slight limp to the third base dugout after he and Mayora collided. 0-2 coming from Cola to Brodine, and this one is taken on the outside corner, strike three call. Brodine did not like the call, but the side is retired in the top of the first inning. The leadoff single wasted for Long Island. No runs, one hit, and one man left on base. And after a half inning, it's the Bluefish, or the Ducks nothing, and the Bluefish coming to bat. Hi, this is Ray Navarrete, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Northeast Facility Supplies is the official janitorial supplier of the Long Island Ducks, serving all of Long Island, both North and South Fork locations, to better serve you. 
We're located in Ronkonkoma and have a complete range of janitorial supplies for all your facility's needs. Whether it's paper, plastics, chemicals, machinery, or equipment, no business is ever too big or too small for us. Don't forget to ask about our price match guarantee. Visit us on the web at www.nefaci.com or give us a call at 631-563-8119. Few places on earth offer the charm and excitement of Fire Island. At Fire Island Ferries, located conveniently at 99 Maple Avenue in Bay Shore, they offer convenient travel to Fire Island seven days a week. Fire Island is quickly becoming a top destination for families of all ages. Experience the informal, carefree communities, the dazzling night scene. Enjoy fine dining or climb to the top of one of the tallest lighthouses in the United States. But there's only one way to get there, by calling Fire Island Ferries at 631 665 Today. For fare and scheduling information, please visit FireIslandFerries.com. Lead off single goes by the wayside for the Ducks in the top of the first inning, so we head to the bottom of the first. No score between the Ducks and the Bridgeport Bluefish. The Ducks and Municipal Credit Union have teamed up this season to present the Walk with a Purpose promotion. Every time a Ducks player walks, Municipal Credit Union will make a donation to the Quacker Jack Foundation. Municipal Credit Union serving members since 1916. James Hauser to the mound for Long Island. He gets his second straight start here on this road trip. Filling in for the injured Dontrell Willis, who is out with tricep tendonitis. More about that coming up in the Ducks injury report in the bottom half of this inning or top half of the second inning I should say for the Bluefish their lineup looks like this Daniel Mayor will lead off he is the second baseman Austin Crum in center field will hit second Prentice Redmond in left field will bat third and the cleanup hitter is the designated hitter Alexis Gomez Luis Lopez at first base hits fifth Louis Rodriguez will do the catching in bat sixth Russ Mitchell at third base in the seventh spot. Stantrell Smith plays right field and bats eighth. And rounding out the order is the shortstop, Iggy Suarez. So Hauser ready on the mound. Mayor ready at the plate. Seems okay after the collision with Perales. Perales also seems okay. He's out in center. And the first pitch taken for a called strike. It is nothing and one. Mayor, the second baseman, was one for four in yesterday's game, including an RBI single. 0-1 pitch from Hauser. And this one taken inside for a ball to even the count at 1-1. One one. Hauser on the season has a record of 1-0, a 5.03 ERA in 17 games, one start. That inflated by his four-run, four-inning outing in York last Friday. Big breaking ball drops in for a strike, and the count now 1-2. and two. In that start, a 7-6 win for the Revolution in that 12-inning marathon. Hauser allowed four runs on eight hits in four innings. Walked two, struck out one. And the left-handers won two. There's a ground ball foul down the third base line. They would once again add one and two. Hauser was pitching well until he allowed a two-out, two-run double to left by Andres Perez in the fourth inning. That allowed the Revolution to tie the game at four. Tough loss to the Ducks. Had a chance to win that game, could not do it. I don't know what just happened there, but Tom was called and Heminen came out from behind home plate. About a third of the way to the mound, said something to Hauser and then came back behind the plate. And here comes a one ball, two strike offering. Hauser ready, kicks and fires. And this one swung on and missed strike three. Blew a fastball by him upstairs. First strike out of the day. And there's one out here in the first inning. First K for Hauser. And with one out, that'll bring up the center fielder, Austin Crum. Crum had a terrific day yesterday at the plate. A pair of infield singles scored two runs. He was three for three at the plate, drew a walk as well. So Crum hits from the left side. First pitch on the way from Hauser. And the pitch is taken right down the middle for strike one. Hauser made two starts last year, both with the York Revolution. 33 games out of the bullpen combined between York and Camden. And now making his second start of the season for Long Island. 0-1 from the left-hander. 
And this pitch is a breaking ball that missed inside. That evens up the count at one and one. No scores we play here in the bottom half of the first inning. Hauser ready to go. Here comes his 1-1 offering. And the pitch is swung on and lifted foul. Over the screen, out of play behind the plate, and the count goes to one and two. Kids all excited to watch some baseball here this morning at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Not a bad way to spend your school day. Seeing the rivalry between the Ducks and the Bridgeport Bluefish. Hauser ready, here comes the 1-2. Breaking ball, hit on the right side. P.J. Phillips on one hop fields and throws to first in time for the out. Two away, ball took a friendly hop for P.J. Phillips. This infield definitely has some high hops to it. We saw it eat up a couple of the infielders yesterday. A hard infield in the grass as well with a lot of brown spots on it. Seems like a very dry field here in Bridgeport. So a two-way and the base is empty. That's going to bring up the left fielder, Prentice Redmond. Yesterday was in the cleanup spot. Today he moves up to the number three spot in the Bridgeport lineup. Redmond hits from the right side. And the first pitch on the way from Hauser. Fastball outside corner for strike one. Rest of the Ducks defense, it's Joe Ash Brodine in left, Danny Perales in center, Adam Bailey around in right. On the infield, Brian Nelson at third, Dan Lyons is the shortstop. P.J. Phillips at second, Ben Broussard at first, and Ralph Henriquez does the catching behind home plate. 0-1 popped up foul behind the plate. This is going to get back into the crowd. And the count quickly at nothing and two on Prentice Redmond. So how's her one strike away from a 1-2-3 bottom of the first inning? Redmond steps back in. Yesterday, Redmond was one for four at the plate with an RBI single in the first inning. 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Late on the high fastball. Two strikeouts in the inning for James Hauser. And a good start for the left-hander as he retires the Bluefish in order in the bottom of the first. So we move to the second inning. No score between the Ducks and the Bridgeport Bluefish. Hi, this is center fielder Danny Perales, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ducksbaseball. Now that Metrex is the official nutrition bar of the Long Island Ducks, they're fueling their powerful lineup with delicious high-quality protein to support lean muscle and strength. So that in 2013, the Long Island Ducks can have their best season ever. Uh-oh. <laughs> Metrex, shaping every body. Beautify your patio, walkway, driveway, or pool surround with Nikolak paving stones and walls. Nikolak specially formulated paver shield offers extra surface wear protection and color enhancement throughout the thickness of the paver. Paver shield guarantees that your pavers will look great for years to come. Bring home the elegance with Nikolak. Visit the Nikolak Design Center, Sunrise Highway, Lindenhurst, or Nikolak.com. Let Nikolak paver, let Nikolak pavers, pave your way. We move to the second inning here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. No score between the Ducks and the Bridgeport Bluefish. Time to look at today's injury report, which is brought to you by Island Shore Physical Therapy, the official therapist of the Long Island Ducks. Right now, the Ducks have four players out on the inactive list with injuries. Ray Navarrete will be out until early in the second half. He has plantar fasciitis in his left foot. Dontrell Willis missing his second consecutive start today. He was scheduled to go today, but missing the start with tricep tendonitis. Forced him to miss the game on Friday in York as well. Expected to return, though, the next time his spot in the rotation comes up. Matt Way missed his start on Sunday in York. He is out with a shoulder impingement. No word yet exactly when his next star will be. And Ryan Streeby also out. He has a wrist injury. He'll be gone for a few weeks. Brian Nelson will lead off for the Ducks. He's the number five hitter and third baseman here today. Michael Cola's first pitch outside for a ball. The count 1-0. Cola spells his last name C-O-L-L-A. You'd think it would be Kala, but pronounced Cola. Here comes a 1-0 from the right-hander. And Nelson will take it all the way. It's a fastball strike the knees. And the count 1-1. One 
yesterday. Brian Nelson had a pretty good day at the plate. Two for five, had a double and a single. 1-1 one, one. on the ground to the right side. First baseman Lopez will gobble it up, take it to the bag himself. Nelson is retired and there's one out here in the second inning. Nelson's double yesterday was his 10th of the season. So with one out and the base is empty, that'll bring up the Ducks catcher, Ralph Henriquez, switch hitter batting from the left side. So Henriquez steps up to the plate. Cola ready to go on the mound. And the first pitch on the way from the big right-hander for Bridgeport. Kicks and fires, and Henriquez will take downstairs and inside for ball one. Henriquez did not play yesterday. Ramon Castro got the start at catcher, and Castro went one for four with a base hit. Here comes a 1-0 from the right-hander, and Henriquez will swing it. Line one in the left field. That's going to be a base hit. Heading towards the line, it gets past the left fielder, Redmond. Henriquez will now round first and dig for a second as Redmond picks it up and fires back in. So it'll be a double for Ralph Henriquez. And Long Island with their second hit of the game. And first time they have had a runner in scoring position here today. Good piece of hitting there by Henriquez. Got a pitch up and out over the plate. Instead of trying to pull it, he pushed it the opposite way in the left field. And it was hit too hard for Redmond to get to it. Redmond probably shifted over two more towards left center with the lefty hitter at the plate. So the Ducks with a runner at second. And only one out here as Henriquez picks up his fourth double of the season. Well, that'll bring up the designated hitter, Murray Watts, who hits in the number seven spot. Cola will now work out of the stretch. And the first pitch on the way to Watts is a fastball low and outside for ball one. Watts did not play in yesterday's game. Right-hander ready to go. Here comes the 1-0 pitch, and Watts swings, rounds one back towards the middle. The second baseman, Mayora, has it go off his glove, and Watts is going to be safe. Tough play there for Mayora, ranging up the middle. They're going to rule that an E4. And for Mayora, his third error of the series, 10th of the season. Now the Ducks with runners at first and third with only one out. And let's see if Long Island can cash in as P.J. Phillips will now come up to bat. So Enriquez moves to third, it was going to be a tough play, though Murray Watts does not run all that well. So runners at the corners, one out for Long Island. And the first pitch on the way here to P.J. Phillips is taken on the outside corner for strike one. Phillips also did not play yesterday. He's got a 268 batting average, 15 for 56, two homers, eight runs batted in. 0-1, Phillips takes this one again, another called strike. Breaking ball dropping over the outside corner. Phillips last played on Saturday in York. When, or check that Sunday in York, he went 0-3 with a pair of strikeouts in the game against Chris Cody. Cola steps off and then gets back up onto the rubber as a Metro North train rolls by, heading New England bound. 0-2 on the way to Phillips, he will take way outside. Nice job by Rodriguez to grab that baseball. Otherwise, it would have been a wild pitch and a run scored for the Ducks. On Allen again with runners at first and third on the Henriquez double. And then Watts reached on the error by Mayora. One ball, two strike pitch up coming. Cole is set from the stretch. Kicks and fires, and Phillips will take low. Good block at home plate again by Rodriguez, one of the best in the business behind home plate. That'll even up the count at two balls and two strikes. Long Island yesterday, again, left 12 runners on base. Definitely a winnable game for the Ducks, but could not come out with the win. And now a 2-2 on the way from the right-hander. Cola kicks and fires, and Phillips will take on the outside corner. Strike three called. Third strike out of the game for Cola, second looking. And now two men out in the second inning, and that'll leave it up to the Ducks shortstop and nine hitter, Dan Lyons. Definitely has got to be frustrating if you're Kevin Baez, the Ducks offense. Has had several opportunities already here in this series, putting runners on base consistently against the Bluefish, but just can't get that hit to bring runners home. 
Boy, the big hit to put a crooked number on the scoreboard. First pitch to Lions. Taken down the middle for a strike. Nothing in one. Lions with a productive day yesterday. He was two for two. Picked up his fourth triple of the year and scored both times that he was on the base pass. Scoring both of the runs for the Ducks in the game. Here comes an 0-1 pitch. And Lions will swing and ground one through the left side. A base hit for Dan Lyons. Henriquez will trot home from third. Watts will stop at second. An RBI single for Dan Lyons. And the Ducks strike first. They lead it one to nothing here in the top of the second inning. So Lyons comes through with the two-out base knock. Third hit already in this series. An owner and run allowed there by Michael Cola. As Henriquez scores from third, Watts stops at second. 13th run batted in of the year for Dan Lyons. Let's see if the Ducks can add to the lead as we go back to the top of the order now for Danny Perales. Perales hits from the left side. Runners lead at first and second, two out for the Ducks. And the first pitch on the way, swung on and tapped foul. Third base side of home plate, just off the end of the bat for Perales. And the count nothing in one. Prowlis, first time up, singled to right field to open the game, then got into a collision near second base with the second baseman, Daniel Mayora, on a fielder's choice ground out. Here, Perales lifts one in the air deep, but foul down the left field line. And the count quickly, nothing and two on the Ducks center fielder. So Cola has gotten ahead in the count, trying to end this inning, not allow anything further across for Bridgeport, as the Ducks have struck first in this ball game. Watts leads at second, Lions at first with two away. And the 0-2 pitch from Michael Cola is taken downstairs for a ball. The count goes to one and two. Adam Bailey waits on deck for Long Island. Two hits and an error in the inning for the Ducks. Right-hander ready. And a 1-2 on the way to Danny Perales. It is taken just outside. Good breaking ball from Cola, and he just missed the corner. The count is two balls and two strikes now on Perales, who entered the day 258 on the season. Seven home runs, though, tied with Adam Bailey for the team lead, and he does lead the team with 26 runs batted in. Here comes a 2-2 from the righty. Deals, and Perales will swing and miss for strike three. Back-to-back -back innings with two strikeouts for Cola, who now has four in the game, but the Ducks strike first. They get a run. On two hits and one big error, they leave one on base through an inning and a half here in Bridgeport. It is now the Ducks one and the Bluefish nothing. Hi, this is shortstop Dan Lyons. You can follow me on Twitter at the Danny Lyons, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtubecom ducksbaseball This one is clocked deep left field by Dan Lyons. Going back is left fielder Peter Barrows. He's looking up. That ball will not leave its wingman. I feel the need. For speed! Fuck me, Goose. Fuck me. No good. Fuck me. Hey, Duck fans, what's more fun than a home run that helps the Ducks win a game? How about a homer that helps the community win? Chappie's Funeral Home and the Long Island Ducks have again teamed up for the Chappie's Home Run Challenge. If the Ducks hit 100 homers this season, Chappie's Funeral Home will donate $5,000 to the Quacker Jack Foundation. Every time a Ducks hitter goes deep, watch for the Chappie's Challenge Home Run count on the scoreboard. And if we reach 100, we're all the winner. Chappie's Funeral Home, where caring for others is a family tradition. This summer... LIPA can help you save big on a new central air conditioning system with up to $1,000 in rebates and up to $500 in operating cost savings each year. And only a LIPA participating Cool Homes contractor can make sure you get all these savings plus a quality installation for maximum comfort over the life of your system. Ready to save? We're ready to help. Visit lipower.org slash cool homes to make sure that your contractor is a LIPA Cool Homes contractor. Bottom of the second inning here in Bridgeport. one nothing lead for the Ducks as James Hauser returns to the mound for his second inning of work. Ducks and Bluefish will close out this three-game set tomorrow night at 7.05 p.m. Eastern time. Bluefish will send out lefty Hunter Jones to the mound. He is just 1-4 on the season with an 8.10 earn run average. And as for the Ducks, they will send right-hander John Brownell to the mound, trying to bounce back from a tough outing against the York Revolution in which... 
Brownell gave up a franchise record tying 16 hits in the game. Brownell is three and four on the year with a 4.27 earn run average. Not sure exactly what's going on here, but a couple of the kids that are in the attendance today for the Ducks, or for the Bluefish, I should say, walking from the third base side to the first base side, kind of a parade of kids on the field. And it looked like they were all done. Now all of a sudden another group coming down onto the field and walking across, so we'll have a delay here to start this second inning. Nice little promotion to let the kids walk across the field, but in the middle of the game, not so sure. And if it's really the best idea, as Hauser now has to wait on the mound after getting warmed up to start the inning. Well, in this second inning, after Hauser retired the side in order in the bottom of the first, it'll be Alexis Gomez, the DH, Luis Lopez, the first baseman, and Louis Rodriguez, the catcher. So the kids finally making their way across the field out into right field. And Bluefish staff trying to hurry them along. So Hauser will take a couple more warm-up tosses here in inning number two. Ducks entered today 16 and 27. Overall on the season, they're five games behind the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs in the Liberty Division standings. Bluefish entered today six and a half games in back of Southern Maryland at 15 and 29. Thanks to their victory yesterday. Bluefish actually went on a 12 game losing streak. Not too long ago, they did not win a game from May 17th through June the 1st. Then finally picked up a 6-2 win in Lancaster on June 2nd before losing on Monday night 6-2. And then they picked themselves up with a win here yesterday by a 4-2 count. So now the kids are off the field and we are ready to go. First pitch up coming here from James Hauser to Alexis Gomez. And pitch is swung in and popped up in the air to left field. Going out is Lyons, coming in is Brodeen. And it's the left fielder Brodeen who will make the call on the catch. So Gomez retired on one pitch and there's one out here in the second inning. Gomez yesterday was one for four at the plate with a run scored, picked up his 10th double of the season. That'll bring up Luis Lopez to the tune of the Harlem Shake and the kids going crazy here at the ballpark at, Har at, ballpark at Harbor Yard all doing the Harlem Shake in the stands. So Lopez will come up to bat and the first pitch on the way from the left-hander James Hauser. Slow delivery on the mound, kicks and fires and Lopez takes a fastball strike. Count nothing and one. Lopez in yesterday's game was one for four, picked up an RBI single in the two-run fifth inning for Bridgeport. 0-1 from the southpaw, and a big breaking ball misses upstairs. Count even at one and one. Lopez, a longtime Bridgeport Bluefish, usually plays third base. This year has moved over to first. 1-1 pitch from Hauser. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Lopez way out in front of that pitch. Count goes to one and two. Bluefish have struggled here at home this year. They're just seven and 15 at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, eight and 14 away from home. One and two the count. Hauser gets the sign from Henriquez. Pitch on the way and Lopez will take low and outside to even up the count at two balls and two strikes. This is the only Atlantic League game going on right now. The other six teams in the league play later tonight. Lopez steps back into the batter's box and a cellar train rolls by from right to left beyond the outfield wall. 2-2 Two -two on the way from the lefty. And the pitch is taken low and inside. That will run the count full. Uh, three balls and two strikes. Lopez trying to become the first bluefish base runner in this game. As Hauser has retired the first four in order. Full count pitch on the way, and that's hit high in the air to left field. Pretty well hit. Brodeen going back to the warning track, and in front of the wall in left field, he will reach up and make the catch. Lopez gave it a rod, and that wind is blowing out to left field. And that is the second out of the inning. Both on fly outs to left, and that will bring up the catcher, Louis Rodriguez. Number nine, Luis Rodriguez. 
Blue skies overhead, some light thin clouds way up high. Sun shining down here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. And Louis Rodriguez will come to the plate to face James Hauser here with two out and the base is empty. First pitch on the way. Rodriguez takes a breaking ball strike on the outside corner. It is nothing in one. Rodriguez yesterday was 0 for 3 at the plate. Did draw a walk against the Ducks pitching staff. And this pitch taken for a strike on the outside corner. And it's quickly nothing and two on Louis Rodriguez. So Hauser looking for back-to-back -back one, two, three innings to open this game. Again, his second start of the year. Both filling in for the injured Dontrell Willis. Time called at home plate. That'll be a one-two pitch upcoming here from James Hauser to Louis Rodriguez. Hauser gets the sign. And the 0-2 on the way from the lefty is chopped to the left side and past Brian Nelson in the left field for a base hit. So Rodriguez finds the hole on the left side. Now the Bluefish have their first base runner of the day on the single to left field by Louis Rodriguez. So one on with two out. And that's going to leave it up to the third baseman, Russ Mitchell, who will bat from the right side. Mitchell takes a couple practice swings. And eventually will step up to home plate. So Rodriguez gets his first hit of the series. And Hauser will now have to work out of the stretch with the runner at first and two away. Ducks lead it one to nothing, thanks to the two out RBI single by Dan Lyons in the top of this second inning. First pitch on the way, and Mitchell will take a fastball upstairs for ball one. Mitchell hit in the sixth by yesterday. He was 0 for 3 at the plate. Struck out twice in yesterday's game. 1-0. That misses outside. It's now two balls and no strikes. So Hauser, after getting two quick outs, Allows the 0-2 single to Rodriguez, now behind 2-0 on Mitchell. And here Hauser misses again. And it's now three balls and no strikes. Ducks have struggled this year with two outs in the inning, trying to retire the side. And Hauser running into some struggles here in this second inning. And this pitch dealt in for a called strike. Count goes to three and one. Mitchell enters today hitting just 146 on the season. Six for 41 and the 3-1 pitch. Missed outside for ball four. So back-to-back -back base runners after Hauser retired the first five of the game. A single and a walk. And the Bluefish threatening with runners at first and second. And two outs here in the second inning. That'll pass the baton to the right fielder, Stantrell Smith. Not what you want to do if you're James Hauser. Walking a guy who's hitting just 146 to bring up a guy who is hitting 357. Smith, 10 for 28 so far this season. And will come up here with a chance to tie this ball game, if not give the Bluefish the lead. First pitch on the way from Hauser, and Smith will take a big breaking ball that missed up and outside. Another ball from Hauser, and the count goes to 1-0. Smith 10 for 28, as we mentioned. No homers, a run batted in. He picked up a single in yesterday's game. 1-0. Matt taken, and this a called strike. Smith doesn't like the call. He checked his swing, and the ball seemed to be up and away. Smith does not like the call at all from Hank Heminen, and the count even at 1-1. One one. Runner at second is Rodriguez. The runner at first, Mitchell. And the 1-1 one, one on the way from Hauser. Big breaking ball, fisted out down the right field line. That is going to drop just foul. Smith nearly had a double that would have scored definitely one, maybe two. But it hit about a foot or two to the right of the chalk. And Hauser now ahead in the count, a ball and two strikes. So the runners will have to retreat to their respective bases, and Smith will have to face another pitch from James Hauser.
Smith, a tall right-handed hitter. He stands in at 6'4", 215 pounds. One ball, two strike pitch from Hauser. Breaking ball missed way up and outside. Nice job by Henriquez to grab that baseball. And it's now two balls and two strikes. Hauser needed 12 pitches to get through the first inning. He's now up to 31 in the game. 2-2 two, two on the way here to Smith. Hauser looks to second, kicks and fires, and Smith will hit a breaking ball in the air to center field. Perales started in, now will retreat. And he will catch up to it and make the grab for the final out of the second inning. So the Bluefish threatened but cannot score against Hauser. Three flyouts in the inning. No runs, one hit, and two men left on base. Through two innings here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, Long Island Ducks still lead it over the Bluefish by a count of one to nothing. Hi, this is Josh Barfield, second baseman for the Ducks, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Hey Ducks fans, your recreation destination this year is The Rinks at Hidden Pond Park. The Rinks features two full-size ice rinks, a 97-acre summer day camp, a New York State licensed preschool academy, and a wide variety of birthday party options. Learn to skate, join one of many hockey leagues, swim in an Olympic-sized pool, and enjoy all the fun that The Rinks has to offer. Visit us today at 660 Terry Road in Hopog, or check us out online at therinks.com. The Rinks, your recreation destination. Nation. Can't get enough of the Long Island Ducks? Well, now you can get even more inside info on your favorite hometown team through Facebook and Twitter. The Ducks are constantly updating fans through social media with scores, transactions, ballpark promotions, and much more. You can even win great prizes. All you'll need to do is make a free account on Facebook and Twitter, and then visit us at Facebook.com slash LI Ducks and Twitter.com slash LI Ducks. Think you're Long Island's biggest Ducks fan? Get connected now. Back here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Long Island Ducks with a 1-0 lead over the Bridgeport Bluefish as we go to inning number three. And it's time for today's third inning trivia, which is brought to you by Carvel. Carvel celebrating more than 75 years of making people happy. Well, James Hauser is a former big leaguer, but he has only pitched one game in the major leagues. He was a member of the Florida Marlins in 2010. Pitched one game on June the 24th. And today's question which team did he face in his lone major league appearance with the Marlins? Again, it came on June 24th, 2010. It was a road game for the Marlins. So you want to know who, which team did James Hauser face in his lone major league appearance? We'll let you think about it and give you the answer in the bottom half of inning number three. Ducks will send up two, three, and four in this inning to try and add to their 1-0 lead. It'll be Adam Bailey, Ben Broussard, and Joe Ash Brodeen. The killer bees in the middle of that lineup. Bailey, Broussard, and Brodeen. Normally Barfield in there as well, but today he gets the day off. First pitch on the way from the right-hander, Michael Cola. And Bailey will take a breaking ball strike. The count nothing and one. Bailey struck out his first time up back in the opening inning. Right-hander looks in for the sign from Rodriguez. His 0-1 offering is swung on and hit in the air to left center field. Long run for the center fielder, Crum, but he will catch up to it and make the grab. So Bailey is retired. And there's one out here in the third inning. So Bailey will head back to the third base dugout. And that is going to bring up the first baseman, Ben Broussard. Broussard in his first at bat hit that ground ball to second base that ended up being a four unassisted fielder's choice when Mayora and Perales collided in between first and second. First pitch to Broussard. He swings and fouls it back to the screen behind home plate. Good cut. But Broussard just missed it in the count, nothing and one. Broussard had a monster return of the lineup on Friday in York, going 5-for-5 five five and reaching base all seven times he came up to the plate. After that game, he had one hit on Saturday. Here he takes low for a ball. One hit on Sunday. Two more hits on Monday. And yesterday he kept the hitting streak alive with a ninth-inning double that nearly was a two-run home run to right that tied the game at four. 1-1, one, one, outside for a ball. Count goes to 2-1 and one on Broussard. 
Enters today with a 368 average, 21 for 57. Three homers, 11 runs batted in. Highest average among the Duff batters. And it'll be a two ball, one strike pitch from Cola. Bruce Hard swings, fouls it off again to the screen behind the plate, this time off to the third base side. So the count quickly at two and two here on Ben Broussard. Ducks with three hits and the Bluefish with one at this point. Bridgeport has made the only error of the ball game. 2-2 two -two from the righty Cola. And Broussard swings and grounds one towards second. Mayara is able to gobble it up this time and throw to first for the out. So Broussard retired. He's now 0 for 2. Two away in the third. And that'll pass the baton of the left fielder, Joe Ash Brodeen. Brodeen, a rare 0 for 5 performance yesterday. Nearly had a hit to left field in the first inning, which would have probably scored a run. But the shortstop, Iggy Suarez, made a terrific sliding catch and then was able to double off Danny Perales at second. Brodeen bunts here and bunts it foul up the third base line. So Brodeen trying to bunt his way on and use his speed, but he bunts it foul. Rare to see from the Ducks cleanup hitter. And the count, nothing in one. Brodeen a strikeout looking in the first inning on a pitch he thought was inside. 0-1. That's way inside for a ball. And it'll even up the count at one ball and one strike. Very rare that Brodeen got an 0-4 in yesterday's game. He's hit safely in 19 of his last 21 games. And the 1-1 off the outside edge. Now two balls and a strike on Brodeen. Ducks were able to take advantage of an error last inning made by Mayora. Kept the inning going and allowed Dan Lyons to get the RBI single with two out, his third hit of the series. Two ball, one strike pitch on the way from the right-hander, Cola. Kicks and fires, and Brodeen will take downstairs for ball three. So Ducks trying to get a two-out base runner here in the third and bring Bryant Nelson to the plate. Also a rare day for the Ducks yesterday with no home runs. Ducks at homeward in each of the first four games of this road trip. Yesterday did not go deep. Nearly had one, though, in the ninth inning. 3-1. Brodeen takes low and outside for ball four, and the Ducks have their first walk of the day. To Municipal Credit Union walk with a purpose. Every time a Ducks batter walks, the Quacker Jack Foundation wins. So Polo with now one walk to his four strikeouts. And with two away, up will set the switch hitting third baseman, Brian Nelson, who will bat from the left side. Nelson digs into the batter's box. He grounded to first on a 1-1 pitch back in the second inning. Cola ready to go as he looks into the side from Rodriguez. He is now working out of the stretch with the runner at first base. And Nelson will take a strike on the outside corner. Good fastball from Cola. And the count nothing in one. Nelson enters today at 244 on the season. He's got five homers, 17 runs batted in. 0-1 pitch on the way. And Nelson takes again. This time it misses outside. That'll even up the count. Ducks hold a 1-0 lead as we play here in the top of inning number three. Good crowd on hand here in Bridgeport. 13 schools in attendance today. 1-1 pitch. That's all in the outside corner and a good curveball from Cola. And the count goes to 1-2. and two. So Cola will try and get through this third inning with the Ducks staying off the scoreboard. Brodeen takes his lead at first base. And the 1-2 from the right-hander. He deals, and Nelson will take just outside. Good fastball again, just missing that corner. Cole has been living on the corners throughout the day today, mostly that outside corner. But he misses here. Evens up the count at 2-2. Two and two. See if Kevin Baez sends Brodeen, turning a throw over to first. Brodeen nearly lost his footing. As he tried to turn and dive back to the bag, when he got back in time, being held on there by Luis Lopez. So now Brodeen will take his lead again. On the year, Joe Ash Brodeen has three stolen bases. He's been caught twice as well. 2-2. Two -two. Outside again. On another breaking ball, and that runs the count full. So now Brodeen will be off with the pitch. Ducks will get their speedy left fielder moving here. 
on the payoff pitch from Cola to Nelson. Cola gets the sign. Nelson waits at the plate. There goes Brodine, and the pitch is swung and fouled back directly behind home plate. Good swing from Nelson. Just missed it on the pitch from Cola. So we'll do it once again here at three balls and two strikes. Beautiful day for baseball here on this Wednesday. And another payoff pitch on the way from Colton to Nelson. Right-hander kicks and fires. Brodine goes, and Nelson takes outside for ball four. Good at bat for Brian Nelson. The Ducks have drawn back-to-back two-out walks here in the third. And now Ralph Henriquez will come up to the plate with runners at first and second and two men out in this top of the third inning. Another Municipal Credit Union walk with a purpose. Every time a Ducks batter walks, the Quacker Jack Foundation wins. Brodine drawing his team-leading 19th walk in the inning. Uh, Nelson, his fifth walk of the season. So two on, two out here is Henriquez, a switch hitter batting left-handed. Cola's first pitch coming to him. And the pitch is taken low and inside. Cola having trouble finding the strike zone here in the third. Cola had 51 pitches now, 30 for strikes. And the count is 1-0. And that's going to bring Louis Rodriguez out to the mound to have a chat with the right-hander. Michael Cola entering today. Has not had too much trouble in terms of walks. 15 walks on the year to 40 strikeouts, so better than a 2-to-1 ratio. Exactly what you like to see from your pitcher. Having trouble here in the third, back-to-back two-out walks to Brodine and Nelson. And Cola's 1-0 on the way to Henriquez. On the outside corner, a strike called, and the count even had 1-1. One and one. Good fastball that time, put it somewhere where Henriquez was not going to swing, and just does get the strike call from Hank Kevinen. Good speed at second, so-so speed at first. Here comes a 1-1. Pitch on the way, and Henriquez swings and bounces one back towards the middle. That's going to sneak through for a base hit. Around third is Brodine. He will come home to score. It's a two-out RBI single to center for Ralph Henriquez, his second hit of the game, and the Ducks lead it 2-0 here in the third inning. So the Ducks yesterday leaving 12 men on base, having trouble coming up with big hits, especially with two men out in the inning. And already in this game, two two-out hits. And for Henriquez, he is now 2-for-2 two two as he picks up his ninth run batted in of the season. So Brodine scores from second. Nelson moves from first to second. Three straight two-out base runners for Long Island, and that will bring up the designated hitter, Murray Watts, hitting from the left side. First pitch on the way to Watts, and he takes a fastball strike on the inside corner. Kevin Myers telling me before the game he was very upset after yesterday's game. His team's inability to get runners home. in the game he felt was a very winnable game for Long Island, especially here in the first half against your divisional rival. This one fouled off to the third base side by Watts, who is now behind that nothing and two. Watts ready to go. Nelson leads at second. Henriquez at first with two out. The 0-2. Watts takes low and outside. A ball and two strikes. So Myers clapping at third base as he does Every game encouraging his team. That's one thing that the Ducks have said about Kevin Bias. He's always positive, always encouraging. Clopping along at third. The one-two. Bounce back to the middle. Will the shortstop get it? No, it's in the center field. The base hit for Murray Watts. Nelson around third. He's going to try and score the throw to the plate, and it is in time. Good tag by Louis Rodriguez, and Nelson is retired at the plate. On the single to center by Murray Watts, and that's going to retire the side. Nelson... Not able to get good speed around third base. So for the Ducks, they get a run on two hits and two walks. No errors, and they leave one. Uh, they leave two on the base paths. And after two and a half, it's now 2-0 Long Island over Bridgeport here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Hi, this is pitcher Ian Snell, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on Ducks' official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. 
Now that Metrex is the official nutrition bar of the Long Island Ducks, they're fueling their powerful lineup with delicious high-quality protein to support lean muscle and strength. So that in 2013, the Long Island Ducks can have their best season ever. Uh Uh-oh. Metrex, shaping every body. I love coming to the stadium. What do you love about a Long Island Ducks game? The excitement. The laughter. The memories. Spending time with my family. Watching my grandson's eyes light up. Dancing with Clocker Jack. What about you? A 400-foot shot. Definitely the food. Getting autographs and running the bases. Play ball! For game times and promos for your 2012 Atlantic League champions, visit liducks.com. I love this game. Ducks baseball. It's game time. We go to the bottom of the third inning here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. 2 nothing. the Ducks lead it thanks to a two-out rally off of Michael Cola in the third inning. We have another parade of kids going from the third base side to the first base side here in this third inning, so we'll have another delay here and really hurting the Ducks here because Joe Ash, or check that, James Hauser is having to wait and delay once again as he comes out to the mound. And Steve Foucault, the pitching coach for the Ducks, just said something to the umpires. The Atlantic League this year has really been enforcing a 90-second rule for in-between inning promotions. But here in Bridgeport, apparently the rule has not applied because Bluefish allowing these young kids from the schools here today to walk across the field from third base to first base in between innings. And definitely taking up some time here as Hauser delays coming out to the mound. So it is time for the answer to today's third inning trivia, which is brought to you by Carvel. Carvel celebrating more than 75 years of making people happy. Gave you the question in the top half of this third inning. James Hauser made one major league appearance in his career. It was in 2010, June 24th, 2010 to be specific. As a member of the Florida Marlins, we wanted to know Which team did James Hauser face? If you guessed the Baltimore Orioles, we would be correct. An interleague matchup at the at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Hauser came into the ball game and he did not fare well. As he ended up pitching an inning and a third, he gave up three hits, three runs, all of them earned, walked one and struck out one. Hauser's first action came in the bottom of the sixth inning as he replaced Sanabia and gave up an RBI double to Luke Scott, and then in the next inning, allowed a three-run home run to Miguel Tejada. It's not the outing that Hauser was looking for, and that ended up being his only major league appearance on June 24th, 2010. Well, the school kids just about off the field here in Bridgeport, and we are just about set to resume baseball here in the bottom half of this third inning. Again, the Ducks got a pair of walks with two out in the top of this third inning. An RBI single to center by Ralph Henriquez that scored Joe Ash Brodeen. And Murray Watts single to center. Kevin Baez sent Brian Nelson around third as he often does. Kevin Baez saying he will almost always send the runner around third with two out and take his chances while Nelson, despite not the best throw from the center fielder Austin Crum, got thrown out at home plate. Good tag by... Louis Rodriguez, the catcher. And that keeps us a 2-0 game. It'll be 9-1-2 and two for the Bluefish here in the third inning. It'll be Suarez, Mayora, and Crum to the plate. So Hauser is ready to go. He is patiently waiting on the mound. No first base coach right now for the Bluefish. As Iggy Suarez will step up to the plate. This just has to be frustrating for the Ducks. They have a 2-0 lead. They want Hauser to get into a rhythm and keep pitching well. But he has had to keep getting delayed here as he gets up to the mound, waiting for the kids to walk across the field. And now for the Bluefish to get up to the plate. Still no first base coach. And now eventually someone comes out of the dugout to coach first base. It looks like Brandon Chavez, an infielder, will coach. First pitch here, and Suarez pops it up. Shallow right field. The second baseman, Phillips, goes out, and he will make the catch. So Suarez retired on the first pitch from James Hauser, and there's one out in the third inning. 
Back to the top of the order we go for Daniel Mayora. Mayora, his first time up, struck out swinging. Mayora hits from the right side. First pitch on the way from Hauser. And Mayora will take a strike on the outside corner, nothing in one. So far, the Bluefish have just two base runners off of Hauser. Both coming in the second inning with two outs, a single to left by Rodriguez and a walk to Russ Mitchell. Suarez yesterday went one for four with the run scored before his pop out here in the third. 0-1 on the way to Mayora. He will swing and bounce one here towards the middle. The shortstop lines, a diving stop to his feet. He throws and it is in time for the out. Close play at first base. Mayora has no idea how he was out. Good scoop out of the dirt by Ben Broussard. And there are two away here in the third inning. From our vantage point, it looked like Broussard, or check that, Mayora had beaten it out. But a great play by Dan Lines, ranging up the middle and making the throw to first. And a good scoop from Broussard. Nice play on both ends for the out. Two away and the base is empty. That's going to bring up the center fielder, Austin Crum. Crum bats from the left side against the left-hander, James Hauser. On the first pitch on the way, Crum swings, lines one in a right field. Bailey charging in. He's going to have to play it on a hop. It's a base hit for Austin Crum, his fourth hit of the series. And for the Bluefish, their second hit of the day. Second straight inning, they have picked up a two-out single off of Hauser. Looked like off the bat, Bailey was going to have a chance to catch that one, but it was kind of an in-between liner. They decided to play it safe and field it on the hop. So with two out and a runner at first, the left fielder Prentice Redman will now come up to bat for Bridgeport. He hits from the right side and a strikeout victim his first time up. First pitch on the way. Redman will take a breaking ball that missed low and inside for ball one. Can we mention all the other Atlantic League games will be later tonight. Sugarland Skeeters at the York Revolution. 6.30 p.m. start at Sovereign Bank Stadium. Skeeters won Last night's game over the Revolution by a 5-4 to four count. This pitch a swing and a miss. Good fastball outside. And that'll even up the count at 1-1. One and one. Southern Maryland in Lancaster to battle the Barnstormers at 7 o'clock p.m. at Clipper Magazine Stadium. Yesterday, the Barnstormers defeated the Blue Crabs 5-2 to two to help out both the Ducks and the Bluefish in the Liberty Division standings. Hauser's 1-1, runner goes, pitch is taken up high for a ball, the throw down to second, not in time, and it goes into center field. Good job by Perales to back up. So a stolen base for Austin Crum. And for Crum, he picks up his fifth steal of the year. He is now five for seven, and now a two ball, one strike count. Lufus trying to score a run here and cut the deficit to two to one. 7.05 start time in Camden. River Sharks hosting the Patriots. Camden with an 8-7 win over Somerset yesterday. Here, Hauser misses low, and the count goes to 3-1. and one. So, again, Hauser struggling here after recording two outs. A single, and now behind 3-1. and one. Redmond hitting from the right side. Hauser gets the sign from Henriquez. 3-1 offering, and that's outside for ball four. So, a second straight inning with two outs, a single, and a walk. Uh, put runners at first and second with two men out. And that'll bring up the designated hitter, Alexis Gomez. That'll be frustrating for both Baez and Foucault to see your starting pitcher get two quick outs on just three pitches. Get two quick outs, two innings in a row, and then allow a single and a walk. We'll see if Hauser can get out of trouble again like he did last inning. He got Smith to fly out to center to end the inning. Here is Gomez, who flied out his first time. First pitch he saw, he flied to left. First pitch from Hauser here, and Gomez grounds one a short. Lines will field. He will go the long way to first in time for the out. And again, Hauser works into and out of trouble here in the third inning. No runs, a hit, a walk, and two more left on base for the Bluefish. We'll have left four in the game. Three innings complete here today at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. And the Ducks lead the Bluefish by a count of two to nothing. Hi, this is Joe Ashbrodine, first baseman, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ducksbaseball. 
Want to know what happy tastes like? Well, treat your taste buds to Carvel's new Iceberg and Carvelate beverages. A Carvel Iceberg starts with your favorite soda, like Coke, Fanta Orange, and Barks Root Beer. Blend in ice and vanilla flavoring. It's then topped off with Carvel's famous soft serve ice cream. And try a new Carvelate, a dynamite mixture of coffee and hazelnut or Irish cream flavor, blended with ice and topped off with whipped cream and crunchies. New Carvelates and Iceberg drinks. Mmm, that's what happy tastes like. Only at Carvel. Visit Carvel.com. For the location nearest you. Hey, Duck fans, you want all the latest inside info on your defending Atlantic League champion Long Island Ducks? Then follow Ducks president and general manager Michael Pfaff on Twitter at twitter.com slash LIDucksGM. You'll find out first right here about player transactions, special stories, and so much more. You'll also be able to interact with Michael directly and get his take on all things Ducks baseball. Head to twitter.com LIDucksGM today and make sure to follow along throughout the entire 2013 season season it's game time to the top of the fourth inning here at the ballpark at harbor yard two nothing the ducks lead it over the bridgeport bluefish two runs five hits no errors for the ducks no runs two hits one error for the bluefish ducks will send up P.J. Phillips, Dan Lyons, and Danny Perales, 8-9-1 in their order against Michael Cola. Here in the fourth inning, Ducks have gotten a pair of two-out RBI singles so far in the game. And James Hauser, his last two innings, has worked into some two-out trouble, but has found a way out of it both times. So here's P.J. Phillips to the plate. He struck out looking his first time up. First pitch on the way from Cola to Phillips. Swung on and missed. Cut through a ball, diving down in the zone, and the count nothing and one. Phillips enters today at 268 on the year, 15 for 56. He has two home runs, eight runs batted in. 0-1 on the way. Phillips takes a fastball strike on the outside corner, and it's quickly nothing and two. Cola's last outing before today for the Bluefish came on May 30th against the York Revolution here at this ballpark. This pitch misses outside for a ball. The count goes to one and two. In that game, Cola threw six innings of seven hit, two run baseball, walked one and struck out a season high tying eight batters. In a game that the Bluefish lost eight to five, one, two. That's downstairs for a ball. That'll even up the count at two and two. His last win came on May 8th here against the Camden River Sharks, a 4-1 victory for the Bluefish. He allowed just one run on four hits in seven innings, walked one and struck out eight, his best start of the year. 2-2, check swing, but it's taken for a called strike anyway. Second time Phillips has been called out on strikes in this game. And there's one out here in the fourth inning as Cola picks up his fifth strikeout of the day. So with one down, that is going to bring up the number nine hitter, the shortstop, Dan Lyons. He drove home the first run of the game for Long Island in the second inning. So Lyons digs in from the right side. And the first pitch coming here from the Bluefish right-hander. Kicks and fires, and Lyons will swing and pop this one in the air. First base side in foul territory. Lopez will make the call and make the catch. Lions retired on the first pitch he sees. And quickly two out for the Ducks here in the fourth inning. Lions had an RBI single his last time up in the second. His 13th run batted in of the year. So with two down and the base is empty, up steps Danny Perales as the Ducks begin their third trip through the order. Rallis one for two thus far in the game. He'll dig into the batter's box in tight to home plate. First pitch on the way from Cola. And Rallis swings, and it's a high, deep drive in the air to left center field. Going back is Crum. And in front of the warning track in left center, he will make the catch. Rallis retires on the first pitch he sees. And a seven-pitch inning there for Michael Cola as he retires the side in order. One, two, three. We move to the bottom of the fourth inning. Ducks still on top, two to nothing, over the Bridgeport Bluefish here in the middle game of this three-game set. 
Hi, this is pitcher John Brownell, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Northeast Facility Supplies is the official janitorial supplier of the Long Island Ducks, serving all of Long Island, both North and South Fork locations to better serve you. We're located in Ronkonkoma and have a complete range of janitorial supplies for all your facility's needs. Whether it's paper, plastics, chemicals, machinery, or equipment, no business is ever too big or too small for us. Don't forget to ask about our price match guarantee. Visit us on the web at www.nefaci.com or give us a call at 631-563-8119. Take your group out to the ball game this season and enjoy all the fun of Ducks baseball at discounted prices with the Hebrew National Picnic Area, Luxury Suites, the Smokin' Owls Party Deck, and so much more. Bringing your group to the game will be an unforgettable experience. The Ducks even offer opportunities to sing the national anthem, serve as a color guard, be the Nicolot Dream Team, put on a free game performance, display your group's artwork, or shag fly balls during Ducks batting practice. To book your outing today, call 631-940-DUCK and ask for the group sales department. Long Island Ducks Baseball, it's game time. Bottom of the fourth inning, the Ducks with a 2-0 lead over the Bridgeport Bluefish. Here in the middle game of this three-game set, Ducks trying to even up the series and set up the rubber game tomorrow to close out this series, which will begin at 7.05 p.m. here in Bridgeport. Ducks fans, now you can enjoy the taste of the Australian Outback at discounted prices just by attending Ducks games. Every Friday home game, Ducks staff members will be handing out coupons for $5 off with the purchase of two lunch entrees at Bethpage Ballpark. All right, Outback Steakhouse, excuse me, as fans exit the ballpark. Whether you're enjoying one of their delicious USDA choice steaks or one of many Aussie Tizers, Outback takes great pride in providing the freshest, highest quality foods possible. They're now open on Saturday and Sunday for lunch beginning at 11 a.m. You can join them every Wednesday as well for No Worries Wednesday, a complete meal for two starting at just $25. At Outback, it's all about the quality and all about the food. It'll be Luis Lopez, Luis Rodriguez, and Russ Mitchell, five, six, and seven in the Bridgeport order. Here in inning number four uh, against the left-hander James Hauser, who begins his fourth inning of work. Hauser has thrown 42 pitches, 27 for strikes. He's been fairly efficient so far. When four innings his first time out, Kevin Baez hoping for at least five here today. And the first pitch outside for a ball, 1-0 on Luis Lopez, who fly to left in his first at bat. Hauser kicks and fires to the plate. Lopez takes outside. And Hauser quickly behind here. Two balls and no strikes. Last two innings, Hauser has gotten the first two out and allowed a single and a walk, but got out of trouble. Here comes a 2-0 pitch. Left-hander deals, and Lopez takes a strike. Good fastball at the knees, and the count goes to two balls and a strike. Lopez batting from the right side, enters today at 3.07. And the 2-1, high deep drive in the air down the left field line. Brodine going back into the corner. He looks up, and this is a foul ball. And the count, 2-2. Two and two. So Lopez gives that one a ride. Second time today, he's hit the ball well to left field. It's a long, loud strike. And landed to the left of the Webster Bank Arena. Home of the Bridgeport Sound Tigers beyond the left field wall. 2 2 the count. Hauser gets the sign. Here comes the pitch. And Lopez will swing and pop this one in the air. First base side in foul territory. Broussard will give this one a look, but that is back into the crowd. And we'll do it once again at 2 and 2. Lopez battling here against Hauser. 2-2 pitch on the way from the lefty. And Lopez will swing and miss for strike three. Weak hack on a breaking ball diving down and in. For James Hauser, it's his third strike out of the day. First since the first inning. And there's one out here in the fourth inning. A 
I'll bring up Louis Rodriguez, the catcher and six hitter for Bridgeport. He picked up a single his first time up, the first Bluefish batter to reach base against James Hauser back in the second inning. Hauser steps up to the plate, or to the mound, I should say, and Rodriguez to the plate. First pitch on the way, and Rodriguez takes a big breaking ball that drops in for a strike. Good curveball from Hauser. Finishing up the out-of-town scoreboard, which we started last inning. Yankees and Indians tonight at Yankee Stadium. 0-1. That's up and away for a ball. CC Sabathia will start for the Yankees. 5-4, 3.71 ERA. Corey Kluber for the Indians. He's 3-3. Three 4.36 ERA. That game begins at 7.05 p.m. Eastern Time after the Yankees' 4-3 win last night over Cleveland. This pitch hits the outside corner for strike two. One and two now on Rodriguez. Mets and the Nationals also getting underway tonight just after 7 o'clock. Dylan G for the Mets. He's 3-6, 5.68 earn run average. Dan Heron for the Nationals. 4-6, 5.09 ERA. Nationals won a 3-2 walk-off win yesterday. Down in D.C. Here Rodriguez chops one foul at the third baseline. That'll keep the count at one and two. NHL playoff action tonight. Game three of the Eastern Conference Finals. Penguins and Bruins up in Boston. Bruins lead that series two games to none. Last night, L.A. Kings got their first win of the Western Conference Finals. A 3-1 win over the Blackhawks to make that series 2-1 in favor of Chicago. 1-2, missed the inside corner. 2-2 two two now on Rodriguez. No action in the NBA playoffs tonight. Game one of the NBA Finals tomorrow night in Miami. Heat hosting the Spurs down in Miami. Two ball, two strike pitch coming here from Hauser to Rodriguez. One out, base is empty. Ducks lead 2-0 here in the fourth. 2-2 two -two pitch, swung on and grounded to third. Nelson will field along the line. He throws across the diamond right on target. Now the home plate umpire is going to call a foul ball. The home plate umpire, Hank Kimmonen, ruled it a foul ball along the third base line. The third base umpire, Alan Reyes, didn't look like he made a call. So they're going to rule it a foul ball, and we'll have another pitch coming here with two balls and two strikes. That was a good play by Nelson to follow through with it. And it certainly looked like it was right along the line, but... Hank Kimmonen ruling that Nelson grabbed the baseball in foul territory. No argument from the Ducks. And a 2-2 once again from Hauser. Swung on and missed for strike three. Good change up that time from the left-hander. Back-to-back strikeouts here in the fourth for Hauser. And two away for the Bluefish. As that will bring up Russ Mitchell, the third baseman. So that brings Russ Mitchell to the plate. Mitchell drew a walk in the second inning. And his only plate appearance of the day. He comes up with the bases empty and two men out. That's from the right side, and he stands in at 5'11", 200 pounds. First pitch from Hauser, and Mitchell will take a breaking ball strike on the outside corner where it's nothing in one. In his windup, Hauser's left foot, which stands on the pitching rubber, kind of comes out of the ground and then goes back into the ground as he delivers the pitch. Kind of a little quirk that he has as he delivers. The old one is upstairs for a ball, count one and one. It's more noticeable when he works out of the stretch. He has to be careful when he does that to not get called for a balk, moving that back foot from the rubber. One, one. Breaking ball, line down the left field line, hooking foul into the picnic marina. And the count goes to one and two. Well, let's see what Hauser does here. For four straight innings in this game, Hauser has retired the first two in the inning. In the first inning, he got the third batter out for a one, two, three inning. The last two innings, he gave up a single and a walk with two out before getting out of trouble. One, two, breaking ball missed outside. Now the count now evens up at two balls and two strikes on Russ Mitchell. Left-hander can get back on the mound. 2-2 two -two pitch. And this one is swung and hit deep in the air down the left field line, but hooking foul and well out of play. As it leaves the yard, and we'll do it once again at 2-2. Two two. 
Beautiful day for baseball today. Traffic moving well on Interstate 95 beyond the left and center field walls. Hauser's 2-2. Mitchell takes up and inside and the count goes full with three balls and two strikes. Bluefish have been very patient here against James Hauser. Trying to work his pitch count up. It's up to 61 right now, 39 for strikes. Payoff pitch on the way from the lefty, and Mitchell will swing and line one back into center field for a base hit. Three straight innings, the Bluefish have picked up a two-out single off the Ducks' lefty. And that will extend the fourth inning and bring up the right fielder, Stantrell Smith. So Smith walks up to the plate here after flying out to center his first time up. And again, Hauser having trouble getting the final out of the inning right away. Letting the Bluefish extend the inning as Mitchell able to fist one out in the center field for a single. So here is Smith with one on and two out. Ducks clinging to a 2-0 lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. First pitch on the way from James Hauser. And this is taken downstairs for ball one. Smith entered today at 357 on the year, 10 for 28. No homers and one run batted in. 1-0 on the way. This is grounded towards second. Tough hop for Phillips, but he keeps it in front of him and throws to first for the out. Good play by P.J. Phillips, and the side retired in the fourth. No runs, one hit. This time only one left on base for the Bluefish. To the fifth inning we go here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Ducks still out in front. They lead it 2 to nothing over Bridgeport here in Southern Connecticut. Hi, this is Bryant Nelson, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on Ducks Baseball official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. This one is clocked. Deep left field by Dan Lyons. Going back is left fielder Peter Barrows. He's looking up. That ball will not leave its wingman. I feel the need for speed. Fuck me, Goose. Fuck me. It's no good. Fuck me. Hey, Duck fans, what's more fun than a home run that helps the Ducks win a game? How about a homer that helps the community win? Chappie's Funeral Home and the Long Island Ducks have again teamed up for the Chappie's Home Run Challenge. If the Ducks hit 100 homers this season, Chappie's Funeral Home will donate $5,000 to the Quacker Jack Foundation. Every time a Ducks hitter goes deep, watch for the Chappie's Challenge Home Run count on the scoreboard. And if we reach 100, we're all the winner. Chappie's Funeral Home, where caring for others is a family tradition. Beautify your patio, walkway, driveway, or pool surround with Nikolak paving stones and walls. Nikolak specially formulated paver shield offers extra surface wear protection and color enhancement throughout the thickness of the paver. Paver shield guarantees that your pavers will look great for years to come. Bring home the elegance with Nikolak. Visit the Nikolak Design Center, Sunrise Highway, Lindenhurst, or Nikolak.com. Let Nikolak paver, let Nikolak pavers, pave your way. the fifth inning we go. 2-0 the Ducks lead it over the Bridgeport Bluefish and Ducks fans don't forget to stop by the Waddle Inn shop on your next visit to the Duck Pond where exclusive hard to find Ducks memorabilia is now on sale. Proceeds benefit the Quacker Jack Foundation the charitable arm of the Long Island Ducks. Flock have a 2-0 lead as we go to the fifth inning. Ducks with their single runs in the second and third on a pair of RBI singles with two out. One by Lyons, one by Henriquez. Adam Bailey to lead off in the fifth against Michael Cola, who begins his fifth inning of work. And the first pitch is outside for ball one. Bailey 0 for 2 thus far today. He uh, struck out swinging and fly to center. And his two trips to home plate. Ducks with five hits. The Bluefish with three. 1-0 on the way to Bailey. And this one is taken low and outside. Two balls and no strikes on the Ducks' right fielder. Bailey enters today at 270 on the year. He's got seven home runs, 22 runs batted in. Cola gets the sign from Rodriguez. 2-0 on the way. And Bailey swings and pumps this one up. Foul territory, third base side, back into the crowd. And hits off the roof and comes back down into the seats. 
So it's now two and one on the lefty swinging Bailey. He'll be followed by Broussard and Brody and Killer Bees coming to the plate again here in the fifth. Two ball, one strike pitch. Bailey swings, lines one in a left field, a base hit. Good piece of hitting again for Adam Bailey. Second hit of the series, both have gone to left. The hitting streak extends to 16. The on-base streak extends to 23, both season highs for a Ducks batter. Uh, the Ducks get the leadoff man on here for the first time since the opening inning as Bailey's on first with nobody out. So that brings up Bruce Starr to hit from the left side, and he's looking for his first hit of the ball game. First pitch on the way from Cola, and Broussard takes downstairs for a ball of the count 1-0. and Today he's 0-2, hit into a four unassisted fielder's choice in the first, and grounded to second in the third. Broussard has picked up a hit in five straight games since coming back from the inactive list with the injury. 1-0. Ground ball right side and through. A base hit for Broussard. Bailey will go to second. He's going to stop right there as Smith fires back in. So the Ducks with a good start here to the fifth as they try and extend their 2-0 lead. Back-to-back -back singles by Bailey and Broussard. And now six hits in a row. Six-game hitting streak, I should say, for Broussard. And runners at first and second. Nobody out for Long Island. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Joe Ash Brodini. Left fielder, number 22, Joe Ash Brodini. So here is Brodeen to bat from the left side. A switch hitter batting left-handed. He has a walk and a strikeout in today's contest. Cola from the stretch. Runners take their lead. And the first pitch on the way to Brodeen is taken low for ball one. Port Jeff Ferry leaving the harbor here in Bridgeport to head back to Long Island. One and the count on Brodeen, who scored a run back in the third inning on a single by Henriquez. For Brodeen, it was his 30th run of the year, most on the Ducks roster this season. 1-0. Brodeen swings, bounces one back to the mound. Cola Fields, he'll throw to second for one, the turn of first in time. A 1-6-3 double play, hit in two by Joe Ash Brodeen. Not a potential rally killer for Long Island after they get back-to-back -back singles to start the inning. Second straight game, Brodin is hit into a double play. Two out, and that'll pass the baton of the third baseman, Brian Nelson. So Brian Nelson will come to the plate. Switch hitter batting left-handed. He is 0 for 1 with a walk. Trying to drive home Bailey from third with another two-out base hit. See if he can do that. First pitch on the way from Cola. And Nelson will swing and foul this one off down the left field line out of play. Up onto the concourse and the count, nothing and one. Nelson drew a walk his last time up in the third inning, tried to score from second on a base hit to center by Murray Watts, but he was thrown out at home plate. Bailey takes his lead. Cola looks over to third. Now deals to the plate, and Nelson will take low and outside. And that evens up the count at one ball and one strike. Nelson entered today at 244 with five homers, 17 runs batted in. One-one pitch. Nelson will swing and foul it off at the plate. Good pitch there, and Nelson just missed it. So the count goes to one and two as Cola tries to get out of a big jam. Runners at first and second, and nobody out in the inning. He induces the double play, and now is ahead of Nelson, one and two. Ducks now with seven hits in the game with the two they have in this inning, looking for their eighth, though, to drive home a run. Cole is one, two on the way to the lefty, swinging Nelson, and the pitch is low and outside. And that evens up the count at two and two. 
Nelson gets on. Ralph Henriquez would be next. Henriquez with two hits already in the ball game. Two ball, two strike count with two out and a runner at third. Here's the pitch, and Nelson will take outside again. Count goes full on Nelson at three and two. Nelson with his fifth walk of the game earlier today. And trying to get on base again and keep this fifth inning going. Ducks two, Bluefish nothing. Crowd making noise here to try and get the final out of this inning. And the 3-2 on the way from Michael Cola. Kicks and fires, and Nelson will swing and ground one up the first baseline foul. Lopez grabbed it, but first base umpire Matt Hensel ruled the foul ball. So we'll do it once again at 3-2. and two. Wind blowing out stiffly to left field here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Fans making some noise again as Cola rubs the baseball on the mound. Nelson yesterday with two hits after an 0-4 for performance on Monday in the 3-2 win against York. Cola will step off and wipe some sweat off his forebrow before getting back on the rubber. Now ready. 3-2 on the way here to Nelson. Bailey leads and the pitch is swung in and bounced foul third base side off the end of the bat. Nelson was out in front of it. Now we'll do it once again at three and two. Next pitch will be the eighth of the at bat. Nelson took seven pitches before drawing the walk in the third. Bailey, the runner at third, opened the inning with a single to left that extended his hitting streak to 16 games. Three two on the way, and Nelson will swing and fist one foul again, third base side. Again, fooled on the pitch by Cola. But Nelson just got enough of it to foul it off. Nelson is in his fourth year with the Ducks. He was with the team in 2007 and 2008. And again last year, helping win the 2012 Atlantic League Championship for Long Island. We'll have another payoff pitch from the Bluefish right-hander. Rodriguez gives him the sign. Now he's ready to go. Here comes another 3-2. Nelson will swing and ground one to the right side. Fielded there by Lopez. He throws to Cola covering. And that will retire the side here in the fifth inning. So the Ducks threaten but do not score. They get two hits in the inning, but no runs. And they leave one on base. Halfway through today's morning contest here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, it's still the Ducks two and the Bluefish nothing. Hi, this is pitcher Matt Way, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Mr. Savemore, it's happening again. I know our electric costs went down after all that new lighting you did through LIPA's lighting retrofit program, but this month's bill is even lower. Should I contact LIPA this time? No, no, Millie. There's still nothing wrong with our LIPA bill. This time I took advantage of LIPA's AC retrofit program. Our central air system was, oh, let's say not too efficient anymore. You remember last summer. With LIPA's AC retrofit program, I replaced all our units here in our offices, in our warehouse, and our showroom. With LIPA's increased rebates and lower cooling costs every summer, our new AC systems will pay for themselves in just a few years. Oh, Mr. Save More, you did it again. You save more. Life us. Back here in Bridgeport, we go to the bottom half of inning number five. It's a 2 0 lead for the Long Island Ducks. James Hauser back onto the mound for his fifth inning of work. He has done very well so far. He's allowed just three hits and two walks, has struck out four in his first four innings of work. And here in the bottom of the fifth inning, he will face 9-1-2 and two in the Bridgeport order, Iggy Suarez, Daniel Mayora, and Austin Crum. Well, the Ducks will return home to Bethpage Ballpark on Friday, June 7th. The beginning of a four-game series against Southern Maryland. 7.05 p.m. start on Friday night. First 1,500 fans will receive 2012 Atlantic League Champions T-shirts courtesy of LIU Riverhead Brentwood. Saturday, June 8th, day-night doubleheader, a 1.05 and a 7.05 p.m. game. It's Dick's Sporting Goods Saturday, so Dick's Sporting Goods coupons going out to fans following both games of the doubleheader. And after the night game, all fans in attendance will be treated to a Gucci fireworks extravaganza presented by NYIT. Then Sunday, a 1.35 p.m. start time to close out the series, Stranger Safety Awareness and Rose Brucia Educational Foundation Day. 
Ducks logo baseballs will go out to the first 1,500 fans. Sunday Family Fun Day as well, so pregame autographs on the field. Postgame Kids Run the Bases, presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union. Tickets available for all four games of the weekend set against Southern Maryland. You can get them at the Beth Page Ballpark box office. Say hello to Benny, Brad, Chris, Anthony, and Sean. You can also get them online at liducks.com or give the Ducks a call at 631-940-TIXX. So Iggy Suarez will lead things off for the Bluefish here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Kids in attendance today for the school day, making some noise, trying to will the Bluefish back into this game. James Hauser ready. And now Tom called as Hauser was about to begin his delivery. Suarez popped up on the first pitch he saw back in the third inning. First pitch on the way from Hauser, and Suarez takes a fastball upstairs for ball one. No action yet for the Ducks in their bullpen. Suarez hitting 219 on the year with a home run and eight runs batted in. And 1 0. That's a strike on the outside corner to even the count at 1 and 1. Suarez yesterday was 1 for 4 with a run scored. Picked up his sixth double of the year in the 1 1 pitch. Here is line in the air to left field. Brodeen moves over to his left. He will make the catch. Suarez retired for the second time today. And there's one out here in the fifth inning. Five straight innings. James Hauser has retired the leadoff batter. Hauser has struggled this year against leadoff hitters. They've gone seven for 17 against them entering today, but Hauser has done a good job keeping the leadoff man for Bridgeport off the base pass. So with one out, back to the top of the order for Daniel Mayora as the Bluefish begin their third trip through the lineup. First pitch on the way from Hauser, and Mayora takes outside for ball one. So far, the Bluefish second baseman is 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a ground out to short. Also committed his 10th error of the season earlier in the game. 1 0. Popped in the air to right field. The second baseman, PJ Phillips, goes out and will make the catch in shallow right for the second out. So, Brown for a fifth straight inning. Hauser has retired the first two batters of the inning. Let's see if he can break the trend here in the fifth and get the number three hitter of the inning to get out in the last three innings. The number three hitter in the inning has picked up a single off Hauser after Hauser got the first two men out. Here's Austin Crum, who was one of those three. Picked up a single to right with two out in the third. Stole second, but was stranded there. First pitch from Hauser on the outside corner for strike one. From a, sing a single and his fifth stolen base of the year. First inning, though, he grounded out to second. 0-1 on the way from the lefty Hauser, and the pitch is taken for another strike. Good fastball on the outside part of the plate, and the count quickly at nothing in two. So can Hauser get the one, two, three inning here in the fifth? Third baseman Nelson plays way off the line at third. And the 0 2 on the way from Hauser. Kicks and fires, and Crum will take a fastball way up high. And that'll run the count 2 1 and 2. Ducks in their road gray jerseys. Bluefish in the alternate teal jerseys here today with the navy blue lettering and numbering. Ducks have the orange lettering and numbering. One, two. Breaking ball swung on and missed strike three. Good slider there from Hauser. As Crum chased outside, fifth strikeout for the Ducks left-hander who has thrown five shutout innings here today. Second one, two, three inning of the game for James Hauser. We go to the sixth here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Two nothing, the Ducks out in front. Hi, this is Adam Bailey, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Ducks Baseball. 
Hi, I'm former Major Leaguer John Franco. Growing up in Brooklyn, I dreamed of playing professional baseball. My dad, a city employee, worked hard so I could live out that dream. The team at MCU is a lot like my dad. They're New Yorkers you can count on, and they'll work hard to help you reach your financial goals. Municipal Credit Union has a full range of financial services that make sense in today's economy. Join today. Call 1-866-JOIN-MCU or visit nymcu.org. MCU. Strong. Trusted. Growing. Hey, Ducks fans, the official hotel of the Long Island Ducks is the Holiday Inn Islip MacArthur Airport in Ronkonkoma. Uncover the perfect balance of memorable, award-winning service and the most central location Long Island has to offer. The Holiday Inn is located less than a quarter mile from the Islip MacArthur Airport with a state-of-the-art health and fitness center, high-speed internet access, a world-class outdoor pool, and the great food and fun inside the Brickyard Bar and Grill. There's never been a better time to visit the Holiday Inn Islip Airport Best of all, it's only minutes away from Beth Page Ballpark. The Holiday Inn, the official hotel of the Long Island Ducks. Call 585-9500 today. That's 631-585-9500. Fans follow all season long as the Long Island Ducks try and meet the Chappies Home Run Challenge. If the Ducks hit 100 home runs... Chappie's Funeral Homes will donate $5,000 to the Quacker Jack Foundation. Chappie's Funeral Homes, where caring for others is our family tradition. Five shutout innings for James Hauser here today. Ducks have a 2-0 lead as we go to the sixth inning. It'll be Ralph Henriquez, Murray Watts, and P.J. Phillips, 6, 7, and 8 in the Ducks order. Left-hander Eric Neeson warming in the bullpen down the left field line, so that will probably be the end for James Hauser here today as he goes one more inning than his last time out. He's thrown 73 pitches, 47 for strike so far today. If that is all for Hauser, well done here today, and it'll be up to the bullpen for the final four innings to try and secure him the victory. First pitch up coming here to Ralph Henriquez against Michael Cola, who begins his sixth inning of work, and Henriquez grounds the first pitch foul. On the count, nothing in one. Henriquez has had a great day so far. A double to left and a run scored in the second. And an RBI single to center with two out in the third. So he's picked up his ninth run batted in of the season here today. And the 0-1 is low. Evens up the count at a ball and a strike. Henriquez also scoring his 10th run of the year. Back in inning number two. Only Duck with two hits thus far among the seven hits for Long Island today. 1-1 is up and outside for ball two. Cola so far through five innings today has given up two runs on seven hits. He's walked a pair of Ducks batters and has struck out five. Two ball, one strike pitch upcoming. Cola looks for the sign, gets it from Rodriguez. Pitch on the way, and Henriquez swings and bounces one back towards the middle. The second baseman, Mayora, fields on the backhand, throws to first just in time to retire Henriquez by a step. And there's one out in the sixth inning. Good play there by Mayora to deny Henriquez his third hit of the day. So with one out and the base is empty, that'll bring up the designated hitter, Murray Watts. Watts will bat from the left side. He has been on base twice today, once on an error, once on a single. First pitch on the way from Cola, and Watts will take a ball down low. Count goes to 1-0. Watts, a big boy, batting from the left side. He is 6'6", 250 pounds out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. 1-0, swing and a miss. Cut through a ball, diving down and away. Looked like a changeup that time from Cola, and the count even up at one and one. Watts waving the bat at home plate, one one pitch, swing and a miss. Missed on the high fastball. And now a ball and two strikes on the Ducks DH. Ducks at this point have left five on base. They have the two nothing lead, but not been able to get a big hit to extend that. And the 1-2. 
Low for ball two, scooped out of the dirt by Rodriguez. Bluefish have some action going in their bullpen down the right field line as well, or at least they did. Looks like a right-hander was warming up. Bluefish have all righties in their bullpen. Two to the count. Cola ready, pitch to Mwatsis, swung on and missed for strike three. Blew the fastball by him. Strikeout number six on the day for the Bluefish right-hander. As Watts goes down for the first time today on strikes. Two out, base is empty here in the sixth, and that will bring up P.J. Phillips. Phillips today is 0 for 2. He has struck out looking both times he has come up to the plate. See if Phillips can turn his fortunes around here in the sixth inning. First pitch on the way, Phillips will take a fastball strike. That hits the outside corner. It's nothing in one. Phillips had seven walks entering today, now has 19 strikeouts on the year. 0-1, takes, and this one another called strike. This one a little bit lower, but on the outside edge, and quickly, Cola ahead of Phillips, nothing in two. Phillips awaits at the plate, 0-2 on the way, and he takes just outside. That was a good pitch there from Cola, wanted strike three. Just throwing heat to P.J. Phillips, challenging him to hit it. So now it's one and two. Infield plays straight away, and the one-two on the way. It swung on and missed for strike three. Pulled the string this time. Phillips has struck out three times today. Seven strikeouts for the Bluefish right-hander, and that retires the side in the sixth. Ducks go in order. For the first time today, and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Long Island still in front, two to nothing. Hi, this is pitcher Bill Murphy. You are listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Want to know what happy tastes like? Well, treat your taste buds to Carvel's new Iceberg and Carvelatte beverages. A Carvel Iceberg starts with your favorite soda, like Coke, Fanta Orange, and Barks Root Beer. Blend in ice and vanilla flavoring. It's then topped off with Carvel's famous soft serve ice cream. And try a new Carvelatte, a dynamite mixture of coffee and hazelnut or Irish cream flavor, blended with ice and topped off with whipped cream and crunchies. New Carvelattes and Iceberg drinks. Mmm, that's what happy tastes like. Only at Carvel. Visit Carvel.com for the location nearest you. Now that Metrex is the official nutrition bar of the Long Island Ducks, they're fueling their powerful lineup with delicious high-quality protein to support lean muscle and strength so that in 2013, the Long Island Ducks can have their best season ever. Uh-oh. <laughs> Metrex, shaping every body. Few places on Earth offer the charm and excitement of Fire Island. At Fire Island Ferries, located conveniently at 99 Maple Avenue in Bay Shore, they offer convenient travel to Fire Island seven days a week. Fire Island is quickly becoming a top destination for families of all ages. Experience the informal, carefree communities, the dazzling night scene. Enjoy fine dining or climb to the top of one of the tallest lighthouses in the United States. But there's only one way to get there, by calling Fire Island Ferries at 631-665-3600 today. For fair and scheduling information, please visit FireIslandFerries.com. James Hauser is done after five shutout innings today in line for his second win of the year. Left-hander Eric Neeson now on a pitch for the Ducks as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Ducks have a 2-0 lead in the first pitch. Fisted in the air to shallow center field. Long run in for Danny Perales, but he will make the catch. And on one pitch, Prentice Redman retired. He's now 0 for 2 with a walk, and there's one out in the sixth inning. Final line for James Hauser, five innings, three hits, no runs today. He walked two and struck out five. 73 pitches, 47 four strikes. And in his second start of the year, definitely much improved from the four-run, four-inning outing his first time in York. Here called strike, the count nothing and one on Alexis Gomez, the DH and cleanup hitter, batting from the left side. Neeson is ready, that is 0-1, outside for a ball, one and one. Gomez has seen two pitches before this at bat. First one he flies to left to lead off the second, the second he grinded a short to end the third. 1-1, swing and a miss, good fastball from Neeson and the count quickly one and two. 
Neeson on the years 2-0, 4.43 ERA in 19 games out of the bullpen. Now has the most appearances on the year for the Ducks, and here a called strike three. He picks up his first strikeout. Gomez did not like the call. Six strikeout of the day for Ducks pitching. And quickly two outs here in the sixth inning. Kevin Myers likes to see these quick innings from Neeson. If he can get Lopez here quickly, he very well could see Neeson go and pitch the seventh as well. You, you would have three righties coming up in the sixth inning as well, but Neeson is working quickly. And the first pitch on the way to Lopez, missed outside for ball one. Lopez 0 for 2 today. He is fly to left and struck out swinging. Ducks had to use two innings for TJ Hose yesterday, so he may not be available today. 1 0. Low and outside again for a third straight, or a second straight at bat. Lopez has gotten ahead two balls and no strikes. Neeson gets the sign from Henriquez, ready to go. 2 0. That's a little bit high. Looked like a good pitch there, but. Heminen says it missed, and now 3-0 on Luis Lopez. Eason works fast, and the 3-0 on the way. That's right down the middle for a strike, 3-1. Bluefish had a right-hander warming up, and instead they still do have a right-hander pitching in the bullpen. 3-1, lifted in the air to right field. Bailey charging in, still coming on. He dives, and he makes a great catch in right field. Adam Bailey robs Luis Lopez on a great dive and grab in right field for the final out of a 1-2-3 sixth inning for Eric Neeson. Nice grab in right. No runs, no hits. Nobody left on base for Bridgeport. To the seventh inning we go here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Ducks still in front, 2 to nothing over the Bluefish. Hi, this is center fielder Ryan Canari, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ducksbaseball. Hey Ducks fans, your recreation destination this year is The Rinks at Hidden Pond Park. The Rinks features two full-size ice rinks, a 97-acre summer day camp, a New York State licensed preschool academy, and a wide variety of birthday party options. Learn to skate, join one of many hockey leagues, swim in an Olympic-sized pool, and enjoy all the fun that The Rinks has to offer. Visit us today at 660 Terry Road in Hopog, or check us out online at therinks.com. The Rinks, your recreation destination. Nation. Can't get enough of the Long Island Ducks? Well, now you can get even more inside info on your favorite hometown team through Facebook and Twitter. The Ducks are constantly updating fans through social media with scores, transactions, ballpark promotions, and much more. You can even win great prizes. All you'll need to do is make a free account on Facebook and Twitter, and then visit us at Facebook.com slash LI Ducks and Twitter.com slash LI Ducks. Think you're Long Island's biggest Ducks fan? Get connected now. I love coming to the stadium. What do you love about a Long Island Ducks game? The excitement. The laughter. The memories. Spending time with my family. Watching my grandson's eyes light up. Dancing with Quacker Jack. What about you? A 400-foot shot. Definitely the food. Getting autographs and running the bases. Play ball! For game times and promos for your 2012 Atlantic League champions, visit liducks.com. I love this game. Ducks baseball. It's game time. To the seventh inning we go, Ducks with a 2-0 lead. And hey, Ducks fans, do you want frequent updates on team transactions, scores, store specials, and the status of upcoming games? Then follow the Long Island Ducks on Twitter at twitter.com slash liducks. With Twitter, the faithful flock will also be able to follow their Ducks and find out more information regarding nightly promotions, player signings, league activities, and so much more. The Ducks are tweeting right now, and you can follow along at twitter.com slash liducks. Michael Cola is done after six innings. The new pitcher is a right-hander, Kanakoa Texiera. He, hits, he pitches from the right side against the righty Dan Lyons to lead off the seventh, and the first pitch on the way is a fastball strike on the outside corner. Texiera enters today's outing with a record of 2-2, two and two, a 3.06 ERA through 14 games out of the bullpen. 0-1 on the way to Lions, and he will take inside. Now leaving up the count at one and one. 
Lions one for two today, an RBI single to left with two outs in the second. Popped out foul to first in the fourth on the first pitch he saw from Cola. 1-1, Lions takes low and outside, two balls and a strike. Final line on Michael Cola, six innings today, gave up seven hits, two runs, one of which was earned. Walked two and struck out seven, 94 pitches, 58 of them for strikes. 2-1 pitch to Lyons. Swinging a liner in a right field. Stan Charles Smith had him played perfectly, and Lyons is retired for the out. Smith had played shallow, knowing that Lyons can often hit the ball to that same spot in right. So one out in the seventh, and that will bring up Danny Perales as the Ducks begin their fourth trip through the order. Looks like the right-hander Ian Snell warming for the Ducks down the left field line, so Neeson may go just one inning. Kevin Bias with the 6th through ninth may go Neeson, Snell, Jared Lansford, and Leo Rosales. With 6, 7, 8, and 9 lineup. Here's Perales, who's 1 for 3. First pitch from Texiera. And it is taken low for ball 1. Kanakoa, spelled K-A-N-E-K-O-A. -E the last name Texiera, T-E-X-E-I-R-A. Similar to Mark Teixeira, just missing one of the I's. 1-0. Little chopper here up the first base line, and that's going to bounce foul. Off the bat of Perales, even the count at one and one. Texiera is a former major leaguer. Played in 2010 with the Royals and the Mariners, and then 2011 with the Royals as well. 49 major league games. He's one and one with a 4.66 earn run average. Also a former Yankees farmhand in 2011. One ball, one strike pitch on the way. And this one is chopped weakly up the first base line and that is gonna bounce foul. That stayed fair, Perales had a good chance of beating it out, but had too much English on it and bounced to the right. So the count one and two. Texiera spent last season with AAA Louisville in the Reds organization. Had an 0 3 record, but a 2.72 ERA in 34 games and three starts. So it'll be a one ball, two strike pitch here to Perales, who singled in the first, struck out in the second, fly to center in the fourth. Ducks with a 2 0 lead. 2 0 pitch on the way, and Perales will take outside. Check that 1 2 pitch on the way, it's outside. That'll leave it up to count at two balls and two strikes. Adam Bailey waits on deck for the Ducks, who have seven hits to the Bluefish three. Texier is 2-2. Just missed the outside corner. Good fastball. And the count now goes to three balls and two strikes. Texier stands in at 6'2", 190 pounds out of Seattle, Washington. Close to the hometown of Joe Ashbrody in Olympia, Washington. 3-2 on the way. Perales swings, lines one. Fair inside the bag at third and down the left field line into the Ducks' bullpen. Takes a big hop out in the left field. Perales going for second. He slides in safely with a double. So Danny Perales with his second hit of the game, 10th double of the season, joins Brian Nelson and Joe Ashbrody in the double-digit double department. So Ducks with a run-out base runner in scoring position here in the seventh inning and that's gonna bring up the right fielder Adam Bailey. Good piece of hitting there by Danny Perales as he slashed that one inside the bag at third and hit the outfield grass about three or four feet to the right of the line in fair territory. So with one on one out here is Bailey who singled to left his last time up. First pitch on the way, and Bailey will take a ball low and outside. Close pitch, just missed. And the count 1-0. and oh. Before the single for Bailey, he had struck out swinging and fly to center. Here comes a 1-0 -oh pitch. Right-hander deals, and Bailey will take downstairs and away once again. Two balls. And no strikes on the Ducks right fielder.
Bailey has now hit safely in 16 straight games, 23 game on base streak. Two zero. That's off the outside edge. And Bailey had three balls and no strikes. One pitch away from drawing a walk, and that would put runners at first and second with one out for Ben Broussard. Ducks looking to add to their 2-0 lead here in the seventh inning. 3-0 on the way. Bailey will take all the way, and that's low for ball four. So Bailey draws his first walk of the game, third walk of the day for a Long Island Ducks batter. It's another Municipal Credit Union walk with a purpose. Every time a Ducks batter walks, the Quacker Jack Foundation wins. Third baseman Russ Mitchell comes in for a chat. Now the catcher, Louis Rodriguez, will go out to talk with the right-hander, Kanakoa Texiera. A big chance for the Ducks again here in the seventh. First and second with one man out. And Ben Broussard is going to come to the plate here. One for three on the day thus far. Michael Pollock with you here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Beautiful day for baseball. Breakfast slash lunch with the Long Island Ducks and the Bridgeport Bluefish. First pitch on the way to Broussard. He will take another pitch out of the zone. Five straight balls from Texiera, and they count 1-0. Oh. Broussard single to right his last time up. That was back in the fifth. Before that, a fielder's choice ground out to second, and then a ground out to second in the third. 1-0. Oh. Broussard swings, bounces it foul up the first baseline. Off the facing of the Bluefish dugout, and the count even up at 1-1. One and one. Broussard trying to add to his 11 runs batted in of the season. Good speed on the bases. Corrales at second and Bailey at first. One man out on the 1-1. One, one. Way up and outside. And the count goes to two balls and one strike. Last time Texiero was on the mound before today. Came in the Bluefish series against the Somerset Patriots back on May the 27th. He allowed three runs on four hits and two walks in an inning of work. 2-1, Broussard takes again up and away. And Texiero one more ball away from the loading the bases with one out for Joe Ash Brodeen. So the Ducks who have struggled somewhat in this series, getting runners home. Trying to bring home two here, or at least load the bases for Brodeen. Ducks have a pair of two out singles in this game for their two runs. 3-1 pitch from Texiera. Broussard takes its outside ball four. Back-to-back -back walks here in the seventh. A double and two walks have loaded the bases for Long Island, and it's another municipal credit union walk with a purpose. Every time a Ducks batter walks, the Quacker Jack Foundation wins. So Bailey goes to second. Perales goes to third on a second straight base on balls. Willie Upshaw is going to come out of the dugout here to chat with the right-hander. Nobody warming up in the Bluefish bullpen, so it's his game right now. The shortstop Suarez, the third baseman Mitchell, also in for the discussion. For the Ducks, this might be their biggest opportunity of the game to really put a dent into the Bluefish and put this game away. Base is loaded, only one out, and their cleanup hitter Joe Ash Brodeen coming to the plate. Long chat going on here on the mound. Hank Kimmonen is out there, but really not breaking up the conversation, just observing the combo. And now, Upshaw will finally head back to the first base dugout. So let's see what Brodeen can do here. Today he has struck out looking, walked and scored, and hit into a 1-6-3 double play in his three trips to the plate. Brodeen a switch hitter batting from the left side. I'm sure Brodeen will stay patient here against Texiero, who has thrown eight of his last nine pitches for balls. Runners lead at every base for the Ducks. First pitch on the way from the right-hander, and Brodeen will take, and it is a strike. And the count, nothing in one. So Brodeen looking for his first hit here of the series. Texiera gets the sign, pitch on the way, Brodeen swings and fouls this one off, third base side, well out of play. 
And the duck left fielder is quickly behind in the count here. Nothing and two against the Bluefish righty reliever. Sherbrodeen will be swinging away here if he gets a good pitch to hit. Corrales at third, Bailey at second, Broussard at first with one out. 0-2 on the way from the right-hander. Broussard takes inside for a ball. And the count goes to one and two. Brodine waves the bat at home plate. Texiera from the stretch gets the sign from Rodriguez. 1-2 offering. Brodine swings, chops this one slowly towards short. Suarez fields, goes to second for one. The turn to first. Not in time, Brodine just beat it out. It's an RBI fielder's choice as Perella scores from third and the Ducks have a 3-0 lead. Well, Brodine using his speed just barely beat out the throw at first base from the second baseman, Meyerson. Uh, Mayora, excuse me. So it's a 6-4 fielder's choice. RBI for Brodine, his 18th of the year. Runners at the corners with two out, and it's now a three-run lead for the Ducks. Bailey moves to third. Broussard is retired at second. Nelson, a switch hitter batting left-handed. First pitch on the way. And Nelson will swing and line this one deep but foul down the left field line. The count nothing and one. Fans making a lot of noise here despite the fact that Bluefish are down 3 0. BB, the Bluefish mascot, saying hello to a lot of the fans down behind home plate. Here, Nelson, it's a high fly ball in the air to left center field. Crum and Redmond converging. It's a center fielder, Crum, who will make the catch, and that retires the side. Ducks had a chance for a big inning. They don't get it, but they do get a run on the RBI fielder's choice by Brodine. They get a run on a hit and two walks. No errors. They leave two on base. Time to stretch here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. It's the Ducks three and the Bluefish nothing. Hey, this is pitcher Eric Neeson, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Mr. Savemore, I just opened our electric bill. There must be some mistake. Uh, yes, Millie, what would that be? It's so much lower. It must be wrong. Should I call Tech Lipa? No, no, Millie. There's nothing wrong with our bill. It's all the new lighting we've installed. Our lighting contractor told me about Lipa's new commercial lighting retrofit program. We were able to upgrade all our lighting here in our offices, in our warehouse, and our showroom. With Lipa's new higher rebates, our new lighting will pay for itself in less than a year, including our contractor costs. Not to mention how this will help improve our sales. And as you see, it's costing us a lot less for electricity. Oh, Mr. Save More, you really do know how to save more. Lipa's commercial lighting retrofit program can reduce your lighting electric costs by up to 40%. Over time, that can mean thousands. Call 1-800-692-2626 or visit lipower.org slash retrofit. Lipa, we're working for you. North Shore LIJ, Southside Hospital in Bayshore, is the health care heart of our community. We provide outstanding health care right here at home with centers of excellence in cardiology, orthopedics, neurosciences, women's health services, and much more. Experience counts, and North Shore LIJ, Southside Hospital has been around for nearly a century of care. For more information, please call 631-968-3000 or visit us on the web at www.nslij.com. To the bottom of the seventh inning we go here in Bridgeport. Ducks three, the Bluefish nothing. And a new pitcher for Long Island. It is right-hander Ian Snell who will take over for the lefty Eric Neeson. Who threw a 1 2 3 6 inning, the first of the relievers that'll be used by Kevin Bias today. Neeson, one inning, no hits, no runs, no walks, and one strikeout. He threw 10 pitches, six of them for strikes. And now the right hander Ian Snell will come on. He'll face Rodriguez, Mitchell, and Smith. The six, seven, and eight hitters for Bridgeport, trying to protect the 3 nothing lead. So Rodriguez comes to the plate from the right side. Ducks have gotten three runs in the ball game in three separate innings. Single runs in the second and third. RBI singles with two out from Dan Lyons and Ralph Enriquez. 
on the RBI fielder's choice in the top half of this seventh inning off the bat of Joe Ash Brodine. First pitch on the way here from Snell. And Rodriguez will take a called strike on the outside corner. Nothing and one. So it took Texiera 25 pitches to get through the top of the seventh. But all things considered, allowed just one run. And the 0-1 is a swing and a miss. Good fastball from Snell. They count nothing in two. Snell was hitting the low 90s in York his last time out earlier in this road trip. Good to see the velocity back up for Snell. And he appears to be getting comfortable on the mound. 0-2. Low and outside for a ball. Count goes to 1-2. and two. Snell on the year has a 6.58 ERA in 15 games. No record. 15 hits in 13 and 2 thirds innings. Just 5 walks to 14 strikeouts. 1-2. Lifted in the air. Foul. First base side out of play. Snell pitched on June 3rd and May 31st in York. The bookend games of the series. Scoreless innings each time out. One hit on the 31st. Two hits on the 3rd. One walk on the 31st. Two strikeouts that day. One strikeout on June 3rd. And the 1-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Went off speed pitch there. Diving down and away. Rodriguez strikes out for the second time today. He is now one for three. And that's the seventh strikeout for Ducks pitching on the afternoon. One out, and that's going to bring up the third baseman, Russ Mitchell. Entering today, Snell has pitched six consecutive scoreless outings, six innings in that span. He's allowed just three hits, no runs, two walks, and has struck out seven. So Snell really starting to pitch very well for Long Island. First pitch on the way to Mitchell, and that's taken over the inside corner for strike one. Mitchell's been on base twice today, a walk in the second, a single to center in the fourth. 0-1 coming from the right-hander, he deals. Breaking ball just missed outside, even the count out a ball and a strike. Looks like the Bluefish have at least one, maybe two right-handers warming down the right field line. One looks to be Mickey Janis, number 18. This one a swing and a miss. Cut through a high fastball, up and inside, and the count one and two. Other right-hander appears to be number 20, Travis Minix, a one-time Long Island duck. One, two, just low and outside, two balls and two strikes. Minix had signed with the Ducks last season before the season began, but was injured in spring training, placed on the inactive list at the beginning of the season, and never ended up pitching for the Ducks. 2-2. Two, two. In there, a called strike three. Another breaking ball over the outside corner. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Ian Snell to start the seventh. That breaking ball working to perfection so far. Two away. And that's going to bring up the right fielder, Stantrell Smith. Ian Snell just looks so much more confident on the mound. Kevin Byers was saying earlier in the year that he just didn't seem to really be throwing all that well. His pitches weren't moving that much and didn't have the velocity that he used to, but that velocity certainly seems like it's back. And as we've seen here, two strikeouts and a pair of nasty breaking balls from the righty Snell. First pitch to Smith. as a fastball low and away for ball one. And Snell trying for another scoreless appearance. It would be his seventh in a row. Ducks lead 3-0 here in the bottom of the seventh. 1-0 pitch. Low and outside. Snell now behind two balls and no strikes. Smith 0 for 2 on the day. He fly to center in the second. Grounded to second in the fourth. Bluefish with just three hits so far in this game. 2-0. Low and outside. Snell overthrowing a bit here. Now behind 3-0. Well, three hits, all singles for the Bluefish. Base hit to left in the second by Rodriguez. Single to right in the third by Crum. And a single to center in the fourth by Mitchell. Just two walks allowed in addition to those three hits. Mitchell had one and Redmond had the other. And here, a strike on the outside corner from Snell to run the count to three and one. So Neeson worked to one, two, three, six. Snell trying to do the same here in the seventh. Time is called at home plate. Enriquez trying to smooth out some of the dirt behind home plate. Now a three, one from Snell. Smith pops this one in the air to right center field. Perales racing over to his left. He will make the running catch. And Ian Snell with a 1-2-3 seventh inning. And that is now 10 straight Bluefish batters retired since the single to center with two outs in the fourth by Mitchell. 
So one, two, three inning for the Bluefish in the seventh, and we move this game to the eighth here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Ducks lead it three to nothing over the Bluefish. Hi, this is infielder Gabriel Suarez, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Beautify your patio, walkway, driveway, or pool surround with Nikolak paving stones and walls. Nikolak specially formulated paver shield offers extra surface wear protection and color enhancement throughout the thickness of the paver. Paver shield guarantees that your pavers will look great for years to come. Bring home the elegance with Nikolak. Visit the Nikolak Design Center, Sunrise Highway, Lindenhurst, or Nikolak.com. Let Nikolak paver, let Nikolak paver. Northeast Facility Supplies is the official janitorial supplier of the Long Island Ducks, serving all of Long Island, both North and South Fork locations to better serve you. We're located in Ronkonkoma and have a complete range of janitorial supplies for all your facility's needs. Whether it's paper, plastics, chemicals, machinery, or equipment, no business is ever too big or too small for us. Don't forget to ask about our price match guarantee. Visit us on the web at www.nefaci.com or give us a call at 631-563-8119. Fans, time to chill out with a cold cup of Hampton Coffee Company Gourmet Ice Coffee available right now at our concession stands, Hampton Coffee is the preferred coffee of the Long Island Ducks. Visit HamptonCoffeeCompany.com or visit their cafes in the Hamptons. The Ducks and yours truly certainly needed at least one, maybe more cups of coffee here this morning. I'm sure the Bluefish did as well with the 10.35 a.m. start time following the 7.05 p.m. game last night. So the Ducks have looked pretty good so far. They have a 3-0 lead over the Bluefish. Three innings where they have scored one run. Bluefish held to just three hits so far as the Ducks pitching staff has put together a nice outing here today. James Hauser with five shutout innings. And back-to-back one, two, three innings for Eric Neeson and Ian Snell. Jared Lancer beginning to warm up for the Ducks down the left field line. He will likely pitch in the eighth and then Leo Rosales in the ninth depending on what the Ducks can do offensively. They will try to add to their lead here in the eighth inning. That will be Ralph Henriquez, Murray Watts, and P.J. Phillips due up for Long Island. Travis Minnix is the new pitcher, right-hander for the Bluefish. First pitch on the way, and Henriquez pops it up foul, third base side out of play. Good day so far for Henriquez. He's two for three at the plate, one of two ducks with multiple hits today. Double to left and scored in the second. RBI single to center in the third, bounced to second. His last time up in the sixth. 0-1 on the way from the right-hander. Mannix kicks and fires, and this is a breaking ball low and outside, one and one. On the year, Travis Minix has no record and a 5.71 ERA in nine games. He has started one game as well. 1-1 one, one the count. Minix gets the sign from Rodriguez. Kick and the pitch, and Henriquez will take low and outside. Scooped out of the dirt by Rodriguez. Count goes to 2-1. and one. Minix 17 and a third innings this year, 25 hits, 15 runs, 11 of them earned, seven walks to 10 strikeouts. Opponents have a high batting average against him at 347. So Minix struggling here after missing last season with an arm injury. 2-1, ripped in the air down the right field line. That's going to be a base hit. This is going to go to the wall. Henriquez around first, digging for second, and he is in there with his second double of the day. Ralph Henriquez with a three-hit ball game here in Bridgeport. Two doubles on the day. Henriquez now with five on the year. And the Ducks get the leadoff man on here in the eighth inning. Second time the Ducks have gotten a leadoff hit in this ball game. Check that third time. So let's see if the Ducks can add to their 3-0 lead. I'm going to bring up Murray Watt, the designated hitter, to bat from the left side. Nine hits now for the flock on the afternoon. Minix is ready. First pitch, and Watts lines this one in the air to shallow left field. This is going to drop in for a base hit in front of Prentice Redmond. Henriquez had a hold up to make sure that would fall, so Murray Watts picks up his second hit of the game. He is now two for four. Uh, the Ducks with runners at the corners and nobody out. And again, a big chance for Long Island. 
to add to their lead and put the Bluefish away. So Watts with two singles, Henriquez goes to third, and here is P.J. Phillips, who has struck out three times on the day. Struggles continuing here for Travis Minix. And here is Phillips to bat from the right side. First pitch coming from the right-hander. Kicks and deals, and Phillips will check his swing on a ball down in the dirt. Briefly got away from the catcher, Rodriguez. And the count is 1-0. and Phillips struck out looking in the second and the fourth, swinging in the sixth. All of those against the right-hander, Michael Cola. So we'll see if Phillips' luck changes against the new pitcher. And now it looks like Minix is hurt. The trainer Erica Ventura comes out of the dugout and is going to take a look here at Travis Minix. He was taking his hat off and looks like he just feels a little uncomfortable on the mound right now. The infielders are also in to take a look at him and Willie Upshaw slowly walking out of the dugout. Minix is going to give the baseball to the home plate umpire. He's going to come out of this game with an injury. And so the Bluefish are going to have to bring in a new pitcher here after Minix allows a double and a single and a first pitch ball to P.J. Phillips. So we'll have a new pitcher coming in for the Bluefish. It looks like a right-hander is going to replace Minix. A count of 1-0. and oh. So we'll see who the new right-hander is, and he will have all the time he needs to warm up after the injury to Minix. We'll take a break and come right back here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Ducks lead 3-0 now with 10 hits in the game, and they are going to try and add to their lead after this. Hi, this is right-handed pitcher Josh Lansford, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Mr. Savemore, it's happening again. I know our electric costs went down after all that new lighting you did through LIPA's lighting retrofit program, but this month's bill is even lower. Should I contact LIPA this time? No, no, Millie. There's still nothing wrong with our LIPA bill. This time I took advantage of LIPA's AC retrofit program. Our central air system was, oh, let's say not too efficient anymore. You remember last summer. With LIPA's AC retrofit program, I replaced all our units here in our offices, in our warehouse, and our showroom. With LIPA's increased rebates and lower cooling costs every summer, our new AC systems will pay for themselves in just a few years. Oh, Mr. Savemore, you did it again! You save more! LIPA's commercial AC retrofit program can reduce your cooling costs by up to 30%. Over time, that can mean thousands. Call 1-800-692-2626 or visit lipower.org slash retrofit. LIPA, we're working for you. Hi, this is James Hauser, a left-handed pitcher, and you're listening to the Ducks Baseball on Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. This one is clocked. Deep left field by Dan Lyons. Going back is left fielder Peter Barrows. He's looking up. That ball will not leave its wingman. I feel the need for speed. Talk to me, Goose. Talk to me. It's no good. Talk to me. Hey, Duck fans, what's more fun than a home run that helps the Ducks win a game? How about a homer that helps the community win? Chappie's Funeral Home and the Long Island Ducks have again teamed up for the Chappie's Home Run Challenge. If the Ducks hit 100 homers this season, Chappie's Funeral Home will donate $5,000 to the Quacker Jack Foundation. Every time a Ducks hitter goes deep, watch for the Chappie's Challenge Home Run count on the scoreboard. And if we reach 100, we're all the winner. Chappie's Funeral Home, where caring for others is a family tradition. Northeast Facility Supplies is the official janitorial supplier of the Long Island Ducks, serving all of Long Island, both North and South Fork locations to better serve you. We're located in Ronkonkoma and have a complete range of janitorial supplies for all your facility's needs. Whether it's paper, plastics, chemicals, machinery, or equipment, no business is ever too big or too small for us. Don't forget to ask about our price match guarantee. Visit us on the web at www.nefaci.com or give us a call at 631-563-8119. I love coming to the stadium. What do you love about a Long Island Ducks game? The excitement. The laughter. The memories. Spending time with my family. Watching my grandson's eyes light up. Dancing with Clocker Jack. What about you? A 400-foot shot. Definitely the food. Getting autographs and running the bases. Play ball! 
for game times and promos for your 2012 Atlantic League champions. Visit liducks.com. I love this game. Ducks baseball, it's game time. We are in the top of the seventh inning. Travis Minix came in to start the inning, gave up a double to right by Ralph Henriquez, a single to left by Murray Watts, and threw ball one to P.J. Phillips and had to come out of the game with an injury. And now the new pitcher for the Bridgeport Blue Pitch is right-hander Mickey Janis, who will take over for Minix here in the eighth inning. Now the Ducks trying to add to a 3-0 lead, excuse me, 3-0 lead here in inning number eight. P.J. Phillips is at the plate. He has struck out three times as Janis will... Finish up his warm-up tosses. Again, had all the time that he needed with the injury to Minix. So now Phillips will come back up to the plate with a 1-0 count. And for Minix, he faces two batters, gives up two hits, no walks or strikeouts. And is responsible for the two runners on as the Ducks try and add to their 3-0 advantage. So Phillips is back in. Janice is ready to go now on the mound. And we are ready to continue inning number eight. Phillips digs into the right-handed batter's box. Janice gets the sign here from Louis Rodriguez. And the 1-0 pitch on the way. Phillips takes a fastball strike at the knees. And the count now one and one. Janice enters this outing with an 0-1 run record, 8.59 ERA in nine games out of the bullpen. It's the worst ERA among the Bluefish pitching staff. 1-1. Phillips swings a chopper to the left side. That's going to get through a base hit for P.J. Phillips. Ralph Henriquez is in to score. It's an RBI single for P.J. Phillips. And the Ducks lead it 4-0 here in the eighth inning. RBI number nine on the year for Phillips. As Henriquez scores from third. Watts stops at second. Three straight hits to start the inning for Long Island. That run charge to Travis Minix. So it's now a 4 0 game. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. And that'll bring up the Ducks shortstop, Dan Lyons. And now the third baseman, Russ Mitchell, and the first baseman, Luis Lopez, are going to come in and have a conversation here with Janice. Not sure what this conversation's about, but under slight delay here in this game. So for Henriquez, his second run of the ball game, Phillips picks up his first run batted in of the day. Ducks have now scored in four of the eight innings in this ball game. The first pitch on the way here from Janis to Lyons. Lyons bunts, pops it in the air behind the plate. Rodriguez racing, he dives, he can't hang on. Almost a terrific catch for Louis Rodriguez, who was sitting behind home plate with his legs split out, and Rodriguez had the ball go into and out of his glove behind home plate. I think the ball might have bounced out when he hit the ground. Lyons trying to bunt his way on there, or at least sacrifice the two runners over. And he popped it up in the air behind the plate. Rodriguez, one of the best catchers in the league, makes a sprawling attempt, but it goes into and out of the mitt. So the count is now 0-1 on Lyons, who was 1 for 3 in the game with an RBI single to left back in the second inning. 0-1 pitch from Janice. Lyons squares again, bunts this one back towards the mound. Janice off the mound fields, will throw to first for the out. So the sacrifice is successful for Dan Lyons. And it'll go 1-4 on the put out. As Janice threw to the second baseman, Mayora covering. Watts goes to third, Phillips to second with one out. And back to the top of the order we go for Danny Perales. For Lyons, that's his third sacrifice bunt of the year. For the Ducks, they're sixth. Now you got the speedy Phillips at second and Watts at first, at third, excuse me, with one man out. Janis from the stretch is set to go. Third baseman in on the grass and the first pitch. Swing and a miss for strike one. Surprised here that the Bluefish have not brought the entire infield in. Not a force at any base with first base open. And already down four runs here to the Ducks in the eighth inning, but just the third baseman, Mitchell, is in on the grass. First baseman, Lopez, halfway. The middle infielders are back. 
0-1 from Peral or to Perales is low and outside, and that evens up the count at one and one. Jared Lancer continuing to warm for the Ducks down the left field line. No action for the Bluefish in their bullpen. Try and get an injury update on Travis Minix to find out why he came out of the game. 1-1 one, one from Janice. Perales takes low. Good block at home plate by Rodriguez to keep it in front of him. And the count now goes to two balls and one strike on the lefty swinging Perales. Perales two for four in this game. Doubled his last time up to left field in the seventh. Scored a run as well, and here he chops one two second. This should force another run home. Morales thrown out at first. The Bluefish concede the run as Watt scores from third on the RBI ground out from Danny Perales. And it's now a 5-0 Ducks lead here in the eighth inning. So Dan Lyons with the sacrifice bunt leads to a run. As it moves the runners to second and third again, I am still shocked that the Bluefish did not bring the infield in, trailing by four runs in the eighth inning, but they were willing to concede that run. So Phillips goes to third. Watt scores for the first time today. Perales picks up his 27th run batted in of the season. Both of those runs that Minix, both of the runners that Minix put on base have scored here in the inning. Two outs, a runner at third for the Ducks. Here is Adam Bailey, the right fielder. First pitch is taken for a called strike. The count nothing and one. Bailey in this game, one for three, single to left in the fifth, drew a walk in the seventh. Both of his times he was on base was stranded at third. And here Bailey takes low and outside. That'll even up the count at one and one. Five nothing Ducks. They now have 11 hits to the Bluefish three. 2-0 on the way. And Bailey swings, pops this one in the air to shallow left center field. The center fielder Crumb moving in towards left. He will make the catch. And that will retire the side in the eighth inning, but not before the Ducks get two runs in the inning on three hits. No errors and one man left on base. Good inning for the Ducks. Their first multiple run inning here of the series. And after seven and a half innings of play today in Bridgeport, it's now 5 nothing Long Island. Here on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Hi, this is pitcher Jared Lansford, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Few places on earth offer the charm and excitement of Fire Island. At Fire Island Ferries, located conveniently at 99 Maple Avenue in Bay Shore, they offer convenient travel to Fire Island seven days a week. Fire Island is quickly becoming a top destination for families of all ages. Experience the informal, carefree communities, the dazzling night scene, enjoy fine dining, or climb to the top of one of the tallest lighthouses in the United States. But there's only one way to get there, by calling Fire Island Ferries at 631-665-3600 today. For fare and scheduling information, please visit FireIslandFerries.com. Hi, I'm former Major Leaguer John Franco. Growing up in Brooklyn, I dreamed of playing professional baseball. My dad, a city employee, worked hard so I could live out that dream. The team at MCU is a lot like my dad. They're New Yorkers you can count on, and they'll work hard to help you reach your financial goals. Municipal Credit Union has a full range of financial services that make sense in today's economy. Join today. Call 1-866-JOIN-MCU or visit nymcu.org. MCU. Strong. Trusted. Growing. Ducks now lead it five to nothing over the Bridgeport Bluefish as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. New pitcher is the right-hander Jared Lansford. Lansford takes over for Ian Snell, who threw a one-two-three inning in the seventh. No hits, no runs, no walks, and two strikeouts. Fifteen pitches, nine for strikes. Back-to-back one-two-three innings out of the Ducks bullpen from Neeson and Snell. And now Jared Lansford is the third reliever used by the Ducks. And he will face 9-1-2 and two in the Bluefish order. Iggy Suarez, Daniel Mayora, and Austin Crum. Ducks fans, remember the Duckbill doubleheader packages are now on sale. 
Each Duckville doubleheader package includes a ticket to watch both the 105 and the 705 p.m. games of the June 8th day-night doubleheader against the Blue Crabs in exclusive luxury suite seating. Fans can enjoy all the benefits of the luxury suites, including cable television, air conditioning, balcony seating, and access to the Duck Club restaurant and bar. And in addition, for each ticket purchased in the package, fans will receive $10 in duck bills, good for use on anything in the ballpark, from tickets to food to beverage to merchandise. All this is included, one convenient package, just $60, a discount of 33% off of the regular price. And fans can purchase this brand new package by visiting the Bethpage Ballpark box office, which is open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or by calling 631-940-TIXX. The package available for the June 8th day-night doubleheader only, and it's on a first-come, first-served basis with limited availability, so be sure to secure your seats today. First pitch from Jared Lansford is a called strike at the knees of Iggy Suarez. And the count nothing in one. Suarez 0 for 2 so far today. Popped a second in the third. Fly to left in the fifth. 0 1 from the right hander. Suarez takes a fastball. This time on the outside corner for a strike. And the count quickly nothing and two. Jared Lancert has been pitching superbly as of late for the Ducks. And the 0 2 on the way. Upstairs for a ball, the count one and two. On the season, Lancert is now two and one with a 3.06 ERA in 19 games. 11 hits in 17 and two thirds innings, six runs, all of which are earned. One, two, low and outside, that evens up the count. Four walks, one intentional walk allowed by Lancert and five, uh, check that, 15, 21 strikeouts. Mixing up my numbers here, 21 strikeouts for Jared Lansford. 2-2, swinging a foul ball to the screen behind home plate. Looks like it's an Amtrak train up on the train tracks above the right field wall, tooting its horn here. With the Ducks in front, 5-0 here in the eighth inning. Two two on the way, swinging a ground ball here left side. Dan Lyons fields a tough hop. And the throw over to first in time to retire Suarez. So Suarez now 0 for 3, and there's one out here in the eighth inning. 11 straight retired by Ducks pitching here in this ball game. And with one out, back to the top of the order as the Bluefish begin their fourth trip through the lineup. It'll be Daniel Mayora, the second baseman and leadoff hitter for Bridgeport. Lancer's first pitch is popped in the air, right side. The right fielder Adam Bailey, who was playing shallow, comes in further and towards the line. He will make the catch. Mayora now 0 for 4 in the game. And quickly, two men out here in the eighth inning. Lots of the school kids have already made their way out here today. Kids have to get back in time for dismissal. Bluefish already had already trailing 5-0 in the game here in the eighth. Two men out, and that'll bring up the center fielder, Austin Crum. Crum will bat from the left side. He's one for three. First pitch on the way, and Crum will take a fastball downstairs for ball one. Crum is one for three with a single to right and a stolen base that came back in the third. Sandwiched in between a ground out to second in the first and a strikeout swinging in the fifth. 1-0, swinging a chopper up the first base line. That is going to go foul. Just went to the right of the bag before Broussard grabbed it. And the count now even at one ball and one strike. Ducks pitching staff has a combined three hitter going right now. James Hauser gave up all three of those hits, all singles. One in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth. Two walks allowed by the Ducks, both by Hauser as well. The pitching staff has combined to strike out eight in this game. Terrific performance so far. And the 1-1, one -one, Crum takes outside. Uh, two balls and a strike. We'll see who comes in a pitch in the ninth inning for the Ducks. Again, they're ahead 5-0 now, and unless Bridgeport can score here, wouldn't be a safe situation. So Rosales may not go today. 2-1, Crum takes, this misses low. And Lansford now behind in the count, three balls and a strike. That train still sitting up there above the right field stand, uh, right field wall. 
A Port Jeff Ferry is arriving beyond the outfield wall here in a Bridgeport. 3-1. That misses low for ball four. And that breaks a string of 12 straight retired by Ducks pitching. And just the third walk of the day allowed by the Ducks pitching staff. So Crum, Crum reaches first with two out here in the eighth inning. And now the left fielder, Prentice Redmond, will get a turn at the plate. First pitch is a breaking ball strike on the outside corner. Redmond today is 0 for 2 with the walk. Drew that walk back in the third inning. 0-1 on the way. Popped in the air. Right in the infield. Who's going to catch this one? The catcher, Henrique, is making the call now. Called off by the third baseman, Nelson, who will make the catch. Good communication by the Ducks, and that will end the eighth inning. So another score we're listening for Jared Lanter. No runs, no hits, a walk, and one runner left on base. We take this game to the ninth inning. It's the Ducks 5, the Bluefish nothing, as the Ducks three defensive outs away from evening up this series at a game apiece. Hi, this is catcher Ralph Enriquez, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Want to know what happy tastes like? Well, treat your taste buds to Carvel's new Iceberg and Carvelatte beverages. A Carvel Iceberg starts with your favorite soda, like Coke, Fanta Orange, and Barks Root Beer. Blend in ice and vanilla flavoring. It's then topped off with Carvel's famous soft serve ice cream. And try a new Carvelatte, a dynamite mixture of coffee and hazelnut or Irish cream flavor, blended with ice and topped off with whipped cream and crunchies. New Carvelattes and Iceberg drinks. Mmm, that's what happy tastes like. Only at Carvel. Visit Carvel.com for the location nearest you. Now that Metrex is the official nutrition bar of the Long Island Ducks, they're fueling their powerful lineup with delicious high-quality protein to support lean muscle and strength so that in 2013, the Long Island Ducks can have their best season ever. Uh-oh. <laughs> Metrex, shaping every body. Few places on earth offer the charm and excitement of Fire Island. At Fire Island Ferries, located conveniently at 99 Maple Avenue in Bay Shore, they offer convenient travel to Fire Island seven days a week. Fire Island is quickly becoming a top destination for families of all ages. Experience the informal, carefree communities, the dazzling night scene. Enjoy fine dining or climb to the top of one of the tallest lighthouses in the United States. But there's only one way to get there, by calling Fire Island Ferries at 631-665-3600 today. For fare and scheduling information, please visit fireislandferries.com. Ben Broussard leads off the ninth inning for the Ducks. He takes the first pitch from Mickey Janis outside for ball one. Ducks have a 5-0 lead over the Bridgeport Bluefish. And here Broussard will take inside, and the count 2-0. and oh. Janice in his second inning of work after relieving Travis Minix, who left with an unspecified injury in the eighth inning. Minix, or rather Janice, allowed the RBI single to P.J. Phillips and an RBI ground out to Perales as Broussard chops one foul up the first baseline. But both of those runs charged to Minix, so the final line for Minix, he faced two batters, two hits, two runs, no walks or strikeouts. Janice... With a count of two and one here on Broussard leading off the ninth. Two ball, one strike pitch on the way. And Broussard takes low. Count now three and one. Ducks trying to even this series at a game of peace. Set up a rubber game tomorrow in the finale of this three-game set at 7.05. 3-1 pitch. And Broussard swings. Lines one in the center field. A base hit. Over in left center to cut it off is Austin Crum. Second hit of the day for Ben Broussard, who has two hits and a walk. Ducks now with 12 hits on the day. Now the Ducks get the leadoff man on here for a second straight inning. I'm going to bring up Joe Ash Brodeen, switch hitting left fielder and cleanup man. Brodeen drove home his 18th run of the season in the seventh inning with an RBI fielder's choice grounder. 
First pitch, Brodine a check swing. And the home plate umpire, Hank Kimminen says he went around, so that is strike one. Looks like Josh Lansford is the right-hander warming up for the Ducks down the left field line. And as expected, Kevin Baez not going to go to his closer if a save situation not needed. Ducks will have at least a five-run advantage going into the bottom of the ninth inning. 0-1 pitch. That's off the outside edge. Now one ball and one strike. Brodine has also walked and scored. Struck out looking and hit into a 1-6-3 double play here today. Broussard leads at first. Long looking for the sign by Mickey Janis. Now he is ready to go. 1-1. Brodine swings, fouls it off to the top of the screen on the third base side of home plate. And the count now 1-2. Mickey Janis last year was with Lake Erie in the Independent Frontier League. He was 1-4 with a 2.53 ERA in 34 games and three starts. He had six saves as well. A 1-2 from the right-hander. Kick in the pitch, and Brodine takes a breaking ball low and inside. And that will even up the count at two balls and two strikes. Janis stands in at 6 foot, 190 pounds out of Sparks, Nevada. Brodine steps back in with a two-ball, two-strike count. Janice gets the sign. Here comes a 2-2 pitch, and Brodine will swing it at a high fly ball in the air to right field. Stanton Smith goes back. Stantrell Smith, excuse me, goes back, makes the catch. And that's the first out here in the ninth inning. So Brodine is retired, and he is now 0 for 4 on the day. Rare 0 for 9 to start the series for Brodine. You wonder if Kevin Bai is moving him down into the cleanup spot. Uh, has changed him up a little bit. He had been red hot, mostly hitting out of the number two spot in the lineup. With the return of Josh Barfield, who was hitting the cover off the ball in the two spot. As we saw yesterday, a 4 for 5 per performance. And Barfield has a little bit more speed than Brodine, so he goes into the two spot. First pitch here. Misses up and outside for ball one to Bryant Nelson. Nelson today is 0 for 3, drew a walk in the third inning. 1-0 from the right-hander. And Nelson takes outside again. Ducks third baseman quickly ahead in the count here. Two balls and no strikes. 5-0 Ducks here in the top of the ninth inning. And that fastball catches the knees for a strike. And it's now a two ball, one strike count on Nelson. James Hauser in line for his second win. First as a starter, five shutout innings today. Gave up three hits and two walks, struck out five. And so far the bullpen, three scoreless innings, just one base runner allowed. The walk to Austin Crum allowed by Jared Lancer last inning. Tom called at home plate, and now Rodriguez is going to go out and have a chat here with Janice. Now the runner at first one out. Nelson kind of laughing at home plate, saying, is this conversation really necessary at this point? Bluefish obviously cannot afford to give up any more runs here down by five, and I'm still puzzled by what they did last inning after the sack bunt allowed by Lions. Runners at second and third and only one out. And the Bluefish did not bring the infield in in the eighth inning. And instead, they conceded another run on the Danny Perales ground ball to second. The infield was in, might have been able to get the out at home plate. But they concede another run and now down five. 2-1 from Janice to Nelson. The pitch. Nelson swings, pops this one in the air, foul third base side. That's going to go back into the crowd. And the count is now two balls and two strikes. Two and two the count here on Nelson, trying for his first hit of the day. He and Brodine, the only two without hits. Two, two, Nelson takes low and inside, scooped out of the dirt. And the count goes to three and two. Brodine and Nelson have each picked up a walk though. So every duck has been on base at least once here today. 
good overall game so far for Long Island. They have gotten the offense with 12 hits and five runs. They've gotten the pitching staff to combine for a terrific outing so far. Defense has not committed an error either. 3-2 from Janice, and Nelson swings, and it's a high fly ball in the air towards second. Mayora settles under it, barely had a move. He makes the catch. So Nelson is retired, two out in the ninth inning. And that's going to bring up the catcher, Ralph Enriquez. Catcher number 30, Ralph Enriquez. Enriquez has had a terrific day so far. Might be in line for Nico Lock, player of the game honors. Three for four at the plate with a run batted in and two runs scored. Against the Bluefish pitching staff. He has a pair of doubles as well. First pitch on the way. Enriquez grounds one to the right side and that gets through a base hit. Four hits on the day for Ralph Enriquez. Second straight game that the Ducks have had a four hit performance. And Enriquez with two doubles, two singles, is at first. Broussard moves to second. Two on and two out in the ninth inning. And that's going to bring up the designated hitter, Murray Watts. Well, yesterday was Josh Barfield, who was four for five at the plate with two runs batted in. And today, Ralph Enriquez, four for five with two doubles, a run batted in, and two runs scored. First pitch here to Murray Watts. He will swing and hit a high pop up in the air on the infield. The catcher Rodriguez tosses away the mask. He will make the call and make the catch. And the side retired in the ninth inning for the Ducks. No runs, two hits. They leave two on base. Ducks have left 10 more on base today, but they lead it five to nothing as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Ducks will try and close out a victory over the Bluefish. Hi, this is reliever Leo Rosales, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Hey, Ducks fans, your recreation destination this year is The Rinks at Hidden Pond Park. The Rinks features two full-size ice rinks, a 97-acre summer day camp, a New York State licensed preschool academy, and a wide variety of birthday party options. Learn to skate, join one of many hockey leagues, swim in an Olympic-sized pool, and enjoy all the fun that The Rinks has to offer. Visit us today at 660 Terry Road in Hop Hog, or check us out online at therinks.com. The Rinks, your recreation destination. Hey, Duck fans, you want all the latest inside info on your defending Atlantic League champion Long Island Ducks? Then follow Ducks president and general manager Michael Pfaff on Twitter at twitter.com slash LIDucksGM. You'll find out first right here about player transactions, special stories, and so much more. You'll also be able to interact with Michael directly and get his take on all things Ducks baseball. Head to twitter.com LIDucksGM today and make sure to follow along throughout the entire 2013 season. It's game time. Mr. Savemore, it's happening again. I know our electric costs went down after all that new lighting you did through LIPA's lighting retrofit program, but this month's bill is even lower. Should I contact LIPA this time? No, no, Millie. There's still nothing wrong with our LIPA bill. This time I took advantage of LIPA's AC retrofit program. Our central air system was, oh, let's say not too efficient anymore. You remember last summer. With LIPA's AC retrofit program, I replaced all our units here in our offices, in our warehouse, and our showroom. With LIPA's increased rebates and lower cooling costs every summer, our new AC systems will pay for themselves in just a few years. Oh, Mr. Savemore, you did it again! You save more! LIPA's commercial AC retrofit program can reduce your cooling costs by up to 30%. Over time, that can mean thousands. Call 1-800-692-2626 or visit lipower.org slash retrofit. LIPA, we're working for you. Bottom of the ninth inning here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Ducks three outs away from evening this three-game set at a game apiece. Bluefish won last night 4-2. to two. Ducks have a 5-0 lead here in game two of the series. As we go to the ninth inning, it will be right-hander Josh Lansford, the brother of Jared Lansford, to try and close this one out. Ducks pitching has been the story here today. The offense has done a great job, too, with 13 hits, five more runs. They have left 10 on base. which is obviously 
Not a good thing for the Ducks to leave 10 on base today after 12 yesterday, but it should be enough to get the Ducks a win. First pitch here from Josh Lansford misses outside for ball one to Alexis Gomez. Pitching staff though, so far eight innings today after Jared Lansford goes one scoreless inning, no hits, no runs, a walk, and no strikeouts. Now this pitch misses for ball two from Josh Lansford. So eight combined innings today, three hits, no runs, three walks, and eight strikeouts. And that'll be a 2-0 on the way from Josh Lansford. He deals, and this one is taken on the outside corner for a strike, two and one. Gomez today 0 for three, flied out to left in the second, grounded a short in the third, and struck out looking in the sixth. Ducks with 13 hits to just three for Bridgeport. 2-1. That's low and outside, and Lansford now behind in the count. Three balls and one strike. Josh Lansford has struggled this year. He's 1-1, one one, 6.28 ERA in 13 games, 22 hits and 14 in the third innings. 3-1 from the right-hander, and Gomez swings and fouls this one off down the left field line. Now we'll run the count full. 12 runs, 10 earned, allowed by Lansford. Four walks to 15 strikeouts. Now a three ball, two strike pitch coming up from the righty. Nelson plays way off the line at third and the three, two. Swung it and chopped to the left side. Nelson will field on a couple hops. Throw across the diamond in time for the out as Broussard hangs on. One out in the bottom of the ninth inning. And that will bring up the first baseman, Luis Lopez. So if everything holds up, James Hauser will get his first win as a starter. Second win of the year, he'd improve to two and oh. Loser will be Michael Cola, the starter for the Bluefish. He would fall to two and four. Now the Ducks temporarily would move to within four and a half of Southern Maryland. Bluefish would fall to seven back, depending the outcome of the game tonight between the Blue Crabs and the Barnstormers in Lancaster. First pitch misses inside for ball one. Count one and zero on Lopez. He is 0 for three today. Flied to left in the second. Struck out swinging in the fourth. Flied to right in the sixth. 1-0, breaking ball inside corner for a strike to count one and one. Josh Lansford's last outing for the Ducks was in Sunday's game, the 7-1 loss to the York Revolution. 1-1, high pop-up in the air to left field. Brodine started back now, comes in a couple steps. He will make the catch. Two batters, two outs, and the Bluefish down to their final out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Louis Rodriguez will come to the plate. In that game, Josh Lansford threw a scoreless inning in relief of Connor Graham. Gave up a double to Salvador Paniagua, but then got Jan to ground out, Patterson to fly out, and Perez to pop out. So two away in the ninth inning. Looks one out away from a shutout victory. And this pitch is a check swing that is fouled off at the plate. And the count nothing in one. This would be the third shutout of the year for Long Island. Josh Lancer gets the sign. Pitch on the way to Rodriguez. Swung on and popped in the air. Foul first base side. Broussard and Henriquez give it a look, but this will be about five or six rows back into the crowd. And the count quickly had nothing in two. Rodriguez one for three today. He's single to left back in the second. Struck out swinging in both the fourth and the seventh. 0-2 pitch on the way from Josh Lancer. Right-hander deals, and this one is swung on and lifted in the air. Foul down the right field line, down into the Kids Cove area. And we'll do it once again here at nothing in two. Ducks one strike away from a victory here today. They lead 5-0 in the bottom of the ninth, and the 0-2 on the way from Josh Lansford is swung on and grounded to third. Nelson on the backhand will field the long throw right on target. This ball game is over, and the Long Island Ducks shut out the Bridgeport Bluefish today 5-0 to even up this series at a game apiece. Well, this is one of the best wins of the year for the Ducks, an all-around terrific effort. They got terrific starting pitching from James Hauser, who fires five shutout innings today. The bullpen does its job with four scoreless innings in relief of Hauser. And the offense puts together a 13-hit performance today, and they score five runs. They were able to get a couple big hits, especially with two out. 
to get enough runs on the board to support the pitching staff and earn the win. Well, don't go anywhere. The postgame show's coming up next. We're going to recap this game and hand out the Nico Lock Player of the Game Award after this. Ducks a 5 nothing winner here today in Bridgeport. Hi, this is pitcher TJ Hose, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. This one is clocked. Deep left field by Dan Lyons. Going back as left fielder Peter Barrows. He's looking up. That ball will not leave its wingman. I feel the need for speed. Talk to me, Goose. Talk to me. It's no good. Talk to me. Hey, Duck fans, what's more fun than a home run that helps the Ducks win a game? How about a homer that helps the community win? Chappie's Funeral Home and the Long Island Ducks have again teamed up for the Chappie's Home Run Challenge. If the Ducks hit 100 homers this season, Chappie's Funeral Home will donate $5,000 to the Quacker Jack Foundation. Every time a Ducks hitter goes deep, watch for the Chappie's Challenge Home Run Count on the scoreboard. And if we reach 100, we're all the winner. Chappie's Funeral Home, where caring for others is a family tradition. I love coming to the stadium. What do you love about a Long Island Ducks game? The excitement. The laughter. The memories. Spending time with my family. Watching my grandson's eyes light up. Dancing with Clocker Jack. What about you? A 400-foot shot. Definitely the food. Getting autographs and running the bases. Play ball! For game times and promos for your 2012 Atlantic League champions, visit liducks.com. I love this game. Ducks baseball. It's game time. Back here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport, Connecticut, Long Island Ducks a 5-0 win over the Bridgeport Bluefish to even this series at one game apiece. Terrific performance all around by the Long Island Ducks today. Their third shutout of the year. They got great pitching. They got good offense. Defense was strong behind them as well. And the Ducks with their 17th win of the season improved to 17-27. The Bluefish fall to 15-30. The Ducks moved to within four and a half games of Southern Maryland in the Liberty Division standings. Well, let's recap today's game. A good one for Long Island again. The Ducks had a chance in the first inning to score, could not, but they would pick themselves up in the second inning. With one out, Ralph Henriquez doubled into the left field corner. Murray Watts then reached on an error by second baseman Daniel Mayura, his third error of the series, 10th of the season. So the Ducks had runners at first and third with one out. P.J. Phillips struck out looking, but Dan Lyons picked him up with an RBI single through the left side to score Henriquez from third. His 13th run batted in of the year gave the Ducks a 1-0 lead. Long Island would add another in the third inning, all with two outs as Joe Ashbrodeen drew a walk. Brian Nelson followed with a walk as well, and Ralph Henriquez delivered an RBI single up the middle that scored Brodeen from second. So Henriquez's second hit of the day, ninth run batted in. And the Ducks had a 2-0 lead, almost added another when Murray Watts followed with a single to center, but Nelson was thrown out trying to score from second on the throw home by Austin Crum. So the Ducks lead was 2-0. It would stay that way all the way until the seventh inning. Ducks would add another in the seventh. So with one out, Danny Perales doubled to left, just inside the bag at third. Adam Bailey and Ben Broussard followed with walks to load the bases uh, against the new pitcher who is Kenakoa Texiera. And then Joe Ashbrodeen then hit a slow chopper to short. It ended up being a 6-4 fielder's choice. Scored Perales from third. The Ducks added another. They were ahead 3-0. Travis Minix came in to pitch the eighth inning. Gave up a double to right by Ralph Henriquez. A single to left by Murray Watts. And then threw a first pitch ball to P.J. Phillips. Minix had to come out of the game with an injury. And so in came Mickey Janis to face P.J. Phillips. Gave up an RBI single. A chopper through the left side that scored Henriquez from third and moved Watts to second and so the Ducks had taken a 4-0 lead on the RBI single Dan Lines and sacrificed the runners to second and third and inexplicably the Bluefish kept the infielders up the middle back and it hurt them because then Danny Perales grounded a second and allowed the runner to score from third and that was Murray Watts and the Ducks had a 5-0 lead rest of the way was all about the Ducks pitching staff it really was about the Ducks pitching staff all day today as James Hauser started the game through five shutout innings, gave up just three hits and two walks, struck out five. Eric Neeson, Ian Snell, Jared Lansford, and Josh Lansford all with scoreless innings in relief. They combined to allow no hits, one walk, and three strikeouts. And in the ninth inning, a 1-2-3 inning recorded by Josh Lansford to retire the side. Bluefish had just three hits on the day, all singles, three walks. 
And the Ducks win it today by a final count of five to nothing. Five runs for the Ducks, 13 hits, no errors. They left 11 on base. For the Bluefish, they had no runs on three hits, one error. They left a total of six on base. Winning pitcher is James Hauser, who improves to 2-0 on the season. Losing pitcher is Michael Cola, and Cola falls to 2-4 on the year. There was no save. Game took two hours and 54 minutes. No announced attendance here at the ballpark at Harvey Arnold. We'll have to try and find that out for you. Today's Nico Lock player of the game, the pitching staff really did a terrific job, but today we're going to recognize the efforts of Ralph Henriquez, who was four for five at the plate, two doubles, two singles, a run batted in, and two runs scored. His first four-hit game of the year. Second straight game that the Ducks have had a four-hit game by a Ducks batter. And so he is today's Nico Lock player of the game. Nico Lock retaining walls and paving stones, a company synonymous with quality and service in the manufactured concrete industry for almost 50 years. We're going to take another break here on the postgame show. When we come back, final look at the out-of-town scoreboard, and then we wrap things up here in Bridgeport, where the Ducks shut out the Bluefish today 5 to nothing. Hi, this is right-handed pitcher Connor Graham, and you're listening to the Ducks Baseball on the Ducks' official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. Beautify your patio, walkway, driveway, or pool surround with Nikolak Paving Stones and Walls. Nikolak specially formulated paver shield offers extra surface wear protection and color enhancement throughout the thickness of the paver. Paver shield guarantees that your pavers will look great for years to come. Bring home the elegance with Nikolak. Visit the Nikolak Design Center, Sunrise Highway, Lindenhurst, or Nikolak.com. Let Nikolak paver, let Nikolak pavers, pave your way. Ducks fans, the official hotel of the Long Island Ducks is the Holiday Inn Islip MacArthur Airport in Ronkonkoma. Uncover the perfect balance of memorable, award-winning service and the most central location Long Island has to offer. The Holiday Inn is located less than a quarter mile from the Islip MacArthur Airport with a state-of-the-art health and fitness center, high-speed internet access, a world-class outdoor pool, and the great food and fun inside the Brickyard Bar and Grill. There's never been a better time to visit the Holiday Inn Islip Airport. Best of all, it's only minutes away from Beth Page Ballpark. The Holiday Inn, the official hotel of the Long Island Ducks. Call 585-9500 today. That's 631-585-9500. Back here in Bridgeport, Connecticut, the Ducks with a 5-0 shutout of the Bridgeport Bluefish today to even up this series at one game apiece, which means that the Final game of this series will be the rubber game of the three-game set tomorrow night at 7.05 p.m. More on that in a minute. First, the out-of-town scoreboard. Again, today's game is the only game going on right now in the Atlantic League. Other three games are later tonight. Sugarland Skeeters visit the York Revolution. Skeeters won last night's game by a count of 5-4 to four to take the opening game of that series. That game will begin at 6.30 p.m. from Sovereign Bank Stadium. 7 o'clock tonight at Clipper Magazine Stadium. Barnstormers host the Blue Crabs. Lancaster with a 6-2 win over the Blue Crabs last night. As they are 5-2, excuse me, they defeat Southern Maryland. So game two of that series is tonight. 7.05 p.m. at Campbell's Field in Camden, New Jersey. It's the River Sharks hosting the Somerset Patriots. Camden with the victory in last night's game. They win it by a count of 8-7. And so Camden hosting Somerset game two of that series. River Sharks trying to hold on to their Liberty Division hopes. They are seven and a half games behind the Blue Crabs entering today. Patriots two and a half games behind the Sugarland Skeeters in the Freedom Division standings. Yankees and the Indians tonight at Yankee Stadium, 7.05. CC Samantha for the Yanks, 5 and 4, 3.71 ERA. Corey Kluber for the Indians, he's 3 and 3 with a 4.36 earner on average. Not after a 4-3 win for the Yankees last night over Cleveland. Mets and Nationals tonight at Nationals Park. Dylan G for the Mets. He is 3-6 with a 5.68 earn run average. Dan Heron for the Nationals, 4-6, 5.09 ERA. Nationals won last night 3-2 in walk-off fashion. Eastern Conference Finals in the NHL playoffs. Game 3 in Boston tonight between the Penguins and the Bruins. Bruins lead the series two games to none. That game will begin at 8 o'clock. Kings won last night by a count of 3-1 to one over the Chicago Blackhawks and now trail just 2-1 to one in their series, the Western Conference Finals. NBA playoffs off tonight. Game one of the NBA Finals is tomorrow at 9 o'clock Eastern time in Miami. Heat hosting the Spurs to decide the NBA champion this year. 
Again, the final game of this series will be tomorrow here in Bridgeport, 7.05 p.m. start time. Our pregame game show will begin at 6.50. And for the Ducks, they will send right-hander John Brownell to the mound. Brownell with a record of 3-4, and 4.27 ERA. On the other side for the Bluefish, Hunter Jones will get the start. And Jones is 1-4 and four with an 8.10 earned run average. So the Ducks will try and get the leg up on the Bluefish here in the first series of 2013. That's going to do it for us here at the ballpark in Harbor Yard today. Once again, the final score. The Ducks defeat the Bridgeport Bluefish 5 to nothing in their third shutout of the season. We invite you to join us for our next Ducks broadcast, which will be tomorrow night. Final game of this three-game set. Final game of the seven-game road trip for the Ducks. Pre-game show will begin at 6.50 p.m. First pitch at 7.05 here in Bridgeport. You can follow all the action right here on the Ducks official YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ducks Baseball. My name is Michael Pollock. Thanks so much for joining me here on your Wednesday morning slash afternoon. Hope you enjoyed the game, breakfast, and lunch with the Ducks and the Bluefish. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and we'll do it all over again on Thursday night here in Bridgeport. Good night and so long from the ballpark at Harbor Yard.